Hey, George, thank you so much for dropping off Nikki at his university. He's still a young man, and we don't have the money to buy him a new car yet. I'm pretty sure he's going to be embarrassed having his old man bringing him in every day. It goes a long way to have you do it. Don't worry about it, Barry. Me and Nikki are like two peas in a pod. I'm totally happy to drop him off. That kid always makes me laugh. How is he going anyway? Has he found any jobs in the area yet? Uh, not yet, I'm afraid. This town isn't exactly at its peak at the moment. A lot of the businesses are getting shut down and people are moving out of here. Before long, this place could become a ghost town. You better be prepared for that. I'm sure it's not going to reach that point, Barry. Then again, it is probably something to worry about for the future. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, how about you come on back here? I could use a couple of beers. No can do on that front. I'm already late as it is for work. I gotta run into work. My boss is an absolute menace. You don't want to tick him off. The last time one of the guys annoyed him, he pulled out his nail gun and started shooting it around the place. Absolute nightmare that guy is. Ah, oh, come on, George. It's just one little favor. A little detour before you head into work. You know how old I am, right? Not only that, but I've got my leg all torn up from that motorbike accident when I was a younger man. That thing still hurts. You know, I'm not allowed to drive a car. My doctor has forbidden me from it. I'm going to use that as a reminder to never hop on a motorbike. I don't even feel safe driving around in my car. I mean, have you seen the people driving around these days? It's absolute nuts the things that they do. Just the other day, this guy almost ran over a kid going through a red light. Good thing that kid had some sort of weird ninja sense. He almost had his life taken that day. Yeah, look, I don't need your little talks about what happens on the roads. You think I haven't driven a car before? I know how people drive out there. What I need to do is you to get me some beers. Now, are you going to do it or not? Look, I'm sorry to say, but I can't. If it was pretty urgent, I would go out of my way to do it. But I don't see the urgency here. Don't worry, you can get wasted on the weekend. Just have a little bit of patience. Barry, it's only a couple of days away. You're kidding me right now. You're not gonna get me those beers? Well, I can't really. Am I gonna sacrifice my job so that you can get drunk today? Useless. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm calling you useless, George. You're an absolute mess. Hey, look, don't get all aggressive with me just because you can't have a drink today. It's not such a big deal. Get over it. You really have some nerve sleeping in my home, eating my food. And you ain't even gonna contribute to it. All I'm asking you for is a little favor. It's a little errand before you go to work. It's not gonna take you any more than ten minutes. Yeah, well, doing a favor dropping your son off this morning and already being late for my job is going out of my way enough. How much more do you want me to do? I can't just sacrifice my lifestyle for you. No, of course you can't. It's your job, right? What you can do is just leech off my household, though. Barry, we've already had this argument before. Do you really want to bring this up again? We had an agreement. Your daughter wants me to stay there. Her and I are working on something big. I'm not just there lounging about. Plus, we had an agreement that I would be doing the cleaning, right? Right? Tell me that we had that agreement. Okay, fine. Uh, yes, we did. Good. And take a look around you, Barry. How's the house at the moment? Well, it's not perfect. I'll say that much. I think I remember seeing a cup in the sink when you left out the door. Okay, and that was your cup. If my memory serves me, you had your morning coffee and then I had to up and leave. So, uh, what if it is my cup? What are you going to do about it? Maybe you should come back here and start cleaning it. Sorry? Are you being for real right now? Of course I am. Because you're going to bring up this agreement we had, right? Well, if that's the case, why aren't you holding your side of the bargain? 
You get to live in this house, but you have to keep it clean. That was the deal. Yeah, I get that, but over a little cup? Barry, are you listening to me? It's a cup. One cup. It takes two seconds to wash it. Are you seriously going to be that strict on me? I've done all the major cleaning for the house. I've done it every day. You're going to get me for a measly little cup? Okay, well, if it takes so little time like you're telling me it does, why don't you just come back here and wash it? Like you said, two seconds, right? While you're at it, you may as well get me those beers, too. Barry, I am not getting you your damn beers. You got that? Don't you have anything else better to do with your day than drinking yourself to death and abusing your wife? Hey, you better watch your mouth, kid. Don't forget that you're living in my house. Man, screw you. I am not putting up with this. I've got to get to work. George, you get back here right now. You and I are not done yet. I need you to get those drinks. George, don't you dare ignore me. Oh my god, babe. I'm so sorry. I'm really so sorry. Please don't be mad. Stuff that. I am out of here. Come on, please. Don't say that. I know things are tough. I know. I understand everything. Just please come back here. Are you kidding me right now, Natalie? Do you really expect me to walk back into that house after what that freak did to me? Hell no. I'd rather sleep on the street tonight than be in the same household as that loser. You don't have to take it that far, George. I know things are tough here. I'm here for you. I'm doing my best to stand up against him. Just what happened back there anyway? I came back home late and when I got there, you guys were absolutely furious with each other. What exactly was going on? Natalie, here's the thing. Your dad has it out for me. What is that supposed to mean? I'm not understanding. Look, I don't know how to explain it, but I guess the best way for you to understand it is that anything that's in that house is extremely precious to him. And I mean everything. Everything from the food to what you can use in the shower to even the people. He thinks you and your brother are just the most amazing, perfect people in the world, that I'm just this stupid painter that's infecting your mentality or something. Man, I just hate that guy so much. Every time he has to do something like this, and it's always over something so stupid. Like, are you sure your dad even finished elementary school? Did he even finish kindergarten? I'm pretty sure his whole body was growing except for his brain. That's still the size of a baby's one. What a loser. Okay, okay, look, I get it. You're annoyed. Natalie, are you kidding me right now? Do you think I'm just annoyed? Have you seen my face? Didn't you see what he's done to it? I am absolutely livid. I know. Look, I'm sorry. I'm not really sure how to handle this. I need to be a bit careful for what I say. You know what happens if you don't make this work, right? You're gonna have to go out there and move into an apartment. I might have to move in with you, but look at the situation. If we're staying with my parents, we won't have to pay much rent, right? That's a serious cut out of our budget. If we're all of a sudden getting an apartment, that's a big expense that we have to pay for. Look, Natalie, I get all of that. I really do. I know that we're not paying financially to live there, but I am paying for it with my mental resources. The dude just won't get off my case. Like just today, we were arguing about me going out to buy him some beers. Since when have I been his little courier boy? Am I just some guy for him to order around? I already did him a big enough favor by dropping off Nikki to university. I was already two hours late for work. Then he wants me to get his beers on top of that? He can just get out of here. Look, I've got to get real with you. I think my dad's drinking has gotten out of hand. Has he always been like this? Is this really the guy that I'm meant to come home and respect? I gotta be honest with you, Natalie. I kind of don't care that this is his house. 
The way that he's been talking to me lately is horrible. Not to mention the way that he talks to his wife. Aren't you guys sick of this dude? Look, everyone is reaching their limit. You know how much he's been harassing me about you, right? He was totally against the idea of me dating you. I mean, we've been dating since high school, right? How long is it going to take for him to finally trust you? Not only that, but you're actually someone who's got your head on. You're telling me. I don't know that he can't see that. So, you're fed up with him. Your mom is fed up with him. Don't you want me to do something about this? What are you going to do, George? What can you do? Just don't forget that this is his house. We still have a lot to thank him for at the end of the day. It's kind of like you said. This is the price to live here. And I still think it's worth it. Well, how does Nikki feel about him? Like, honestly, think about it. If everyone was really against him, we could probably have some sort of conference. We could all sit him down together as a family. We could all discuss our issues with each other. And every single one of us can gang up on him. We can make him understand how much of a selfish and demanding douchebag he is. Are you kidding me, George? There's no way that's going to work! Are you serious? Why wouldn't it work? It seems like the best plan ever. You clearly don't know his relationship with Nikki. Nikki absolutely loves his dad. Those two are so close. In fact, if we ever did something to attack my dad, then Nikki would be his first defender. And I'm telling you, he would defend him valiantly. Are you kidding me right now? A cool kid like Nikki actually likes his dad? What does he see in the guy? That guy's a fat old man. He doesn't do anything around here. It wasn't like that all the time, though. I think it happened around the time that Nikki started high school. That's when Dad really started taking the drink seriously. Before that, though, he was amazing. Dad used to do all types of sports, especially before he had a family. That's how Mom fell in love with him in the first place. At first, he was in the football team. He was a really big guy, and then he would do gym after that. Getting a bit older, he started to participate in marathons a lot more and became really, really lean. He passed on that active lifestyle to Nikki. Nikki still loved doing that type of thing, and they would play sports together all the time. But you know what happens, right? Nikki starts high school, and sports isn't as cool as anymore. He enjoys playing video games a lot more now. Wow, so I'm guessing that's how your dad started drinking? His son doesn't want to play sports anymore, so the only thing that he has left to do is get drunk on his own. That's pretty much the case. Nikki used to come home and play sports with his dad, but when he came home from high school, he would go to his room and play games instead. I think my dad took that quite harshly. Consequently, he took to the beers a lot more aggressively. All right, well, look, here's the thing, Natalie. That's all well and good. It's nice to understand that that's the type of guy that he used to be. But at the same time, do we really have to be lenient about this? Just because your son doesn't want to play sports with you anymore, that doesn't give you an excuse to start drinking and abusing people. Whatever darkness that guy has inside, he's got to deal with it himself. He can't be projecting it onto others. You're right, George. You're really right. Gosh, I didn't think things would come up to this moment. I didn't think he would actually hit you. You should have seen this one coming, Natalie. Even if I did, I mean, I'm a guy living in his house that he doesn't like. He is super protective of his family, especially you. I know that he's accepted that we're together and we're allowed to sleep in the same house. Uh, but come on, we don't even get to sleep in the same bedroom as each other. This is just stupid. Well, you've got to look at it from his point of view. I'm still his little princess. Are you still going to be his little princess when you're 60 years old? Do I have to wait that long until we can sleep in the same bed as each other? Come on, admit it, Natalie. You want to snuggle? I know you do. Oh my god, stop. Don't think about that type of thing. I don't want you sneaking into my room. Why not? He doesn't have to know. We can be quiet. Uh, you know what? I could even sneak in there tonight. He thinks I'm not coming back. I'll just park the car a couple of blocks down and start walking there. 
keep that window open. Oh my god, George, just stop. This is so silly. Don't come back here. Oh, why not? You were the one telling me a couple of minutes ago that I should come back there. You're begging me to come back. Don't worry, your knight in shining armor is on his way. Honestly, George, I'm serious. Not after that, and especially not in my room. It doesn't need to be your room. Just keep the window to my room open. It's okay, he doesn't know that I'm there, so he wouldn't be suspicious about you sleeping in there. Make sure you wear those cute little elephant pajamas you have. George, honestly, stop! You're going to get us in trouble! Ah, that is so cute. You sound like we're in high school still. I remember the first time that I jumped through that window. I've become somewhat of an expert at it. Let me hit it again. I'm being serious, George. Cut it out already. We're not in high school. We shouldn't be doing this type of thing. Natalie, are you kidding me right now? You've become so sour since you've been getting older. It's just a little bit of excitement. Come on, what do you have against it? What's the difference between now and back then? The difference between now and then is that back then I was a 15-year-old girl with butterflies running through my head. I'm not some dumb girl anymore. I don't do that type of thing, especially if it's going to enrage my father. I mean, he put a mark on your face. Imagine if he does it to a wall. But he's not going to find out. You've got to just trust me. George, the answer is no. It's too risky. The question is, what if he does find you? What are you going to do then? Oh, far out. You know what? You might have a point. This just totally sucks. This is all because I'm a painter. What did you just say? Yeah, look, that's what we argued about today. Well, I mean, it was one of the things that we argued about. Well, I mean, it was one of the things that we argued about. When I got home, he pulled me up about the beers. It seemed he managed to find a way to get his hands on some alcohol. He probably walked to the store and carried the thing home himself. It's quite the distance. I've got to be honest, I don't know how he did it, especially with that leg of his. The first thing that happens when I walk through the door is that a beer bottle goes flying past my face and hits the wall behind me. That thing came out of nowhere. I'm pretty sure he was aiming for my head too. Oh my god, that's so serious. He didn't actually do that, did he? Come on, Natalie, am I going to lie about this? This happened. Well, take a look at the situation. He was drunk. I'm pretty sure he's in a very emotional state. Are you seriously going to start defending him now? The guy could have given me a brain injury. All that glass could have gone into my eyes. Like, come on, Natalie. That right there is assault. I know, I know. It's just... Look, I actually don't know. We argued back and forth about the beers, pretty much the same conversation I had with him this morning. I stressed to him the importance of my work and that my money is going towards our future. I need to save that money as you're in university studying. It's important. That's when he calls me some loser painter that will never be anything more than a painter. I'm just going to be some guy that comes home and plays video games all night, wasting away my life. Someone that's not suited to date a girl that's amazing as you. He thinks that I am not worthy of you. He thinks that there's some other cool, awesome guy with a Lamborghini out there that you should be dating. Not some guy that paints houses for a living. Oh my god, George. You don't actually listen to him, do you? Don't listen to what he says. He doesn't know how I feel. He doesn't know where my heart is. My heart is with you. I don't know, to be honest, Natalie. I was thinking that would be the case. But after today, I'm feeling quite disheartened. Oh my god, why would you say that? Well, look, he kind of has a point. You're an amazing girl. I mean, maybe you could get a guy who drives a Lamborghini all day. It definitely seems possible to me. Don't listen to an old guy that's miserable with his life. He's got nothing good to say. It's funny you say that because that's exactly what he said to me. 
He said that I'm the one that's miserable with my life. I couldn't get into university. I didn't have any choice but to be a painter. He acts like I'm stupid. He doesn't realize that I actually chose not to go to university. He doesn't realize that you and I had a dream when we were in high school and we want to fulfill that dream. Me being a painter is just what I have to do to get us there. He just doesn't understand it at all. So that's when I told him that he's actually the miserable one. Just some old guy that does nothing with his life. Sits at home all day with no friends, drinking. At least that's what I wanted to tell him. He gave me a good whack in the face before I could finish what I wanted to say. That's when I pushed him over and walked out of the door. Wow. So that's what happened. Look, George, I'm really sorry. This has all been bubbling under the surface for a while now, hasn't it? Everyone's been really mad at each other. Look, let's just let things calm down. Give it a couple of days and let me talk to him. I'm sure we can work out a solution. Are you sure we can't just move out of here and get our own place? Are you 100% sure that this is what you want to do, Natalie? It's the best thing for us. Trust me. When we reach the place that we want to be in life, we're going to look back on this moment and be really grateful we made the decision that we did. All right, fine. I'll believe you then. It's been a while since I've slept in a car. This is going to be a very interesting experience. You know what? Scratch that. We're going to get you back here tomorrow. I'm going to give that guy a piece of my mind. How are you going, sport? Yesterday was quite a rough experience, wasn't it? How are you feeling? How's that mug of yours looking? Yeah, good, thanks. Let me get back to my day. Hang on a minute, George. Don't go just yet. We need to talk. I'm not really sure about what happened yesterday. I'll have to admit that I probably drank a little bit more than I usually do. I think I got a lot of pent-up emotions and demons decided to show themselves last night. Firstly, I just want to say sorry for everything that happened. Yeah, okay, fine. I get it. You're sorry. I've got stuff to do. Go back to your beers. That's what we need to talk about. No one's really happy about this situation. You and I have our issues, and my daughter is taking this quite harshly. She actually told me that she might leave the house if this stuff continues. Did she actually say that? She sure did. She mentioned that you and her were going to rent out an apartment somewhere. Somewhere cheap, uh, somewhere that's very far away from here where I can't find you guys. I just can't let that happen. This is my little girl that we're talking about. Well, you gotta stop treating her like a little girl at some point, Barry. You gotta face the fact that she's an adult. She's grown up. So, uh, what do you expect me to do then? Just leave her in your hands? Leave her in the hands of some painter? Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea. What do you have against me? I've dated your daughter for a long time. I know your family as well. You're the only guy that I just can't seem to get through to. You can play the good guy as much as you want, George. I see you for what you really are. What is that supposed to mean? I am upfront about who I am. It's all honesty here. You're not getting anything fake from me. I've got no reason to fake stuff. The point of the matter is that I know what you are like. I know what you were when you were in high school. You were the worst kid in that school. You had a reputation about you. All the other parents would talk about you. Is that what this is all about? Some of the things I did when I was a little kid? Well, uh, that stuff right there is important. What you did yesterday makes you into the man you are today, whether you'd like to accept that or not. It's the truth. Fine, so you still think that I'm that little brat kid from high school, do you? Look, everyone was like that at that age. But you were something else. I mean, you actually stole things from the teacher's office. You were getting into fights more than once a week. 
It's amazing that you didn't enter some sort of penitentiary system. Oh, come on, Barry. That's all in the past. Do you think that I'm going to continue being that type of guy forever? I'd be in prison by now if I was. Besides, don't you know that your daughter is the whole reason why I changed back then? How so? Oh, come on. Natalie was the first girl to actually approach me like a human being. She kind of saw something in me. She saw that I wasn't just a delinquent. I could be a lot more than that. She wanted to bring whatever good there was inside out of me. From that point on, we started dating. We had a dream. We built it up together. Now, the both of us are working towards that dream. Who are you kidding? Your words sound delicate, George, I'll say that much. But your actions tell me otherwise. What is that supposed to mean? I'm a decent guy. I go to work. I do my job. I come home. I clean the house for you. What else do you expect from me? It's your influence that I don't enjoy. I know you're passing on some bad behavior to my son, Nikki. What are you talking about? Nikki's cool. He's a good guy. And you know what? So what if him and I are close? Why do you have an issue with it? I don't want your poor high school attitude having an effect on him. I want him to be the best. He's a young man right now. He just graduated from high school. From this point on, the possibilities for where his life will take him are endless. I don't want him making a mistake. In my mind, getting away from you is the only option that he has. Oh, come on, Barry. Pull yourself together. You know the type of characters that they have out there. You know that there are actual criminals. Heck, I'm even better than the normal guy. There are a lot of guys out there that just spend their whole lives going to the clubs or addicted to some sort of substance. What about those goddamn video games? What do you and Nikki get up to in that room? Heck, I don't even know if you guys are on some sort of substance at this point. It is all very suspicious behind that door. Barry, look, I promise you nothing is going on. We're just two guys that are really close with each other. I help him with a little bit of university stuff. He tells me what he's learning. Sure, we hang out a little bit, but it is nothing too excessive. Hmm, well, look. I don't want my daughter moving out of this house. She's not gonna make it out there on her own. She needs me to take care of her. You are kidding me right now. Barry, just how long do you think you're gonna keep this up? She's gonna be old at some point. Don't you realize that I'm just doing my job as a parent? Well, a parent that's doing a good job will let that kid fly at some point. She's trying to get out there into the skies, and you're just holding her leg, preventing her from doing it. I don't need some young brat telling me how I should raise my kid. I need my daughter in this home. Yeah, well, enjoy her then. Don't expect me to be coming back there. No, uh, that's not the point. She's not going to stay here unless you're here. What did you just say? That's the way it is. When I was talking to her, uh, she said that if you're going to leave, then she will too. She is hell-bent on following you. I don't know what little fantasy you put into her head, but she really believes it. She told me that obviously she wants to stay here. She thinks it's the best option. But if the environment's not perfect for you, then she would rather leave. She actually said that, did she? That is so interesting. So, uh, you know what? I'm gonna cut you a deal. I'll leave you alone. I won't say anything. I won't harass you when you're going to work. How does that sound? It's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, sorry, Barry. I am not taking the bait. Are you kidding me right now? What could you not like about this deal? You get to come back here and live on cheaper rent. Not only that, but you don't have any harassment from me. What else could you ask for? The fact is that you're still an alcoholic at the end of the day. I don't know what happened in your life, but you just can't seem to stay away from that drink. When you do get on that stuff, you're an absolute nightmare. 
I can't deal with you. It is way too much for me. Honestly, Barry, I would rather live on my own than have to put up with that, especially when you ask me to go out for your alcohol. Hey, I told you, didn't I? I'm not going to do that. Well, unless you quit that drink, I can't be sure. The liquor is really holding you back. Fine. You know what? If that's what it takes to have my daughter stay here, then I guess that's what I'll do then. I'll stop the drink and you can come back here. Fine. We have a deal. But I'm warning you now, Barry. If we have any issues, anything even minor, I am out of there. Hey, Barry, how are you going? I finished up at work early today. I'm starting to head home. I'm wondering what you guys are going to do for dinner. Uh, do you want me to grab a pizza or something? You know what? That would be nice. Actually, uh, make mine a pepperoni. Extra large. Yes, sir. So anyway, how are things going? It's been about a month since you quit the drink. Are you feeling all right? What are you now, my therapist? Do you have to check up on me every month or something? Just mind your own business, George. Well, hey, look, I just need to be sure because I don't want to come home to some drunken fat dude again. Just because my daughter told me that she'll leave doesn't give you the right to insult me. If you call me fat one more time, I might be tempted to kick you out. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Just what exactly are you doing with your time anyway? Well, look, I'm not really sure. I thought about picking up a hobby, and I decided to get into some of the games that you and Nikki are playing. Oh, really? That's interesting. I want to know what the, the big fuss about these games are. Which ones are you playing? It's the one on top of the pile. Oh, yeah? We've been playing that one heaps lately. Nikki likes to play it in his off time. Yeah, uh, but, but there's just one little problem. There wasn't much memory on this little game console of yours. I had to make way for my own. I took a look at all of the files and I saw one labeled as George. I thought that was a really silly name, to be honest. I went on the save file itself and noticed that there wasn't much progression either. I mean, uh, the character was poorly built. He didn't have good equipment. It seems like someone didn't understand how to play the game, really. So I did everyone a favor and I deleted it. Wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? Yeah, I deleted the file. I mean, I wanted to start playing as well, right? Whoever was playing on that game did a horrible job at it. I mean, they made the character like some sort of weird lizard person. Who would do that? That is ridiculous. Only an absolute idiot would do that. I made a new save file on a new game, and I called the person Master. <laughs> I think that's a very appropriate title for someone like me playing that game. Barry, do you have any idea what you've just done? What? Uh, what's wrong, George? Oh, you seem really upset. Did something happen? Oh, oh wait, don't tell me. Was that actually your save file? Were you meant to be playing on this? <laughs> Damn, that sucks. <laughs> Barry, you have no idea what's just happened. I can't believe this. Oh, it must be true. This is what you've been playing on. Wow, that must really suck. I mean, you must have spent so many hours on this character. This was an investment right there. And I just flushed it down the toilet. <laughs> you must be really angry at me. Damn. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Barry, you just deleted your son's game file. What did you just say? That wasn't my save file. That was Nikki's. Hey, come on. It's not good to lie, you know. Cut it out with that nonsense. I'm being serious right now. Nikki has been playing on that thing for ages and you just deleted it. That guy's gonna be so mad when he gets home. 
Can we just rewind here a, a second? What are you talking about right now? How could this be his game file? It just says George. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that sounds like George. It doesn't sound anything like Nikki to me. Barry, you've got no idea the reason behind that name. Nikki was just trying to be funny. He wanted to create a dumb character of me. That's why it was a lizard. He figured that he would change the name to something that sounded silly. That's why he chose that name. That file was meant to be a joke, but he actually got really serious about it. There was something really fun about playing that character. So eventually, he just got hooked and he spent so many hours on that thing. I'm telling you now, when he gets home, he is going to be super mad. You better do something about that. Oh, crap. You gotta be kidding me. You're serious right now, aren't you? I just deleted my son's save file. This is unbelievable. Oh, we gotta do something. All right, uh, you know what? Ditch the pizza. We gotta do something about this. Do what, Barry? The save file is gone. Uh, there must be some sort of backup or uh, maybe a corrupted file entry somewhere. Uh, there's got to be a way that we can retrieve it. Well, these are consoles. We're not dealing with computers. There's no backup system. The moment you delete, that thing is gone. Oh, you got to be joking me. Oh, well, if that's the case, we're just going to have to build up the character to be exactly the same as what Nikki had it before I deleted it. You are kidding me right now. Do you know how much time that's going to take? Not only that, but the specific aspects of that character? We are never going to achieve that. Whatever fake character we bring up, it's not going to be the character that he created. He is going to be mad, probably be even more mad than if we try to hide it. Well, this is just ridiculous. What do you expect me to do then? Well, you're just going to have to be a man, Barry. Own up and admit what you did. Admit that you deleted his file. I can't do that. He's gonna hate me for the rest of his life. All that respect that he has for me. I don't want my son to hate me. He's the only thing that I care about in this world. Well, I don't think you really have a choice at this point. I mean, what other options do you have? You know what? I just thought of the best idea ever. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, well, let's hear it. What do you have for us, MacGyver? Let's say that you did it. I'm sorry? What did you just say? Yeah, let's pin the blame on you. What an amazing idea. I can't believe we're stressing out about this. We can just say that you did this and everyone is happy. I don't see how everyone is happy. I mean, sure, you get to avoid the blame for it, but that means I get the heat. That is not fair. Well, come on. It just makes sense. We'll give him a little story. We'll say that you were jealous of the character that he created. You wanted to have something like that, but you just couldn't do it. Out of jealousy, you deleted his save file. What a crap story. Do you really expect him to believe that? If it's coming from his father, I do. Anyway, if that's out of the way, you can put pizza back on the menu. You know what? I am in a really good mood. Let's get some garlic bread. Barry, don't you dare lie about what happened. You hear me? Don't cause issues between Nikki and me. Hey, Barry, look, I just got some really urgent news. I only just found out about it. You're the first person I'm telling. I'm not going to be here for the next month. What was that? My little brother is off on an exchange program at the moment, and he's got a holiday coming up. It's a little bit last minute, but he has invited me and my parents to come see him. I haven't seen that guy in ages. I want to know how he's doing, so I'm going to be staying there. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that you're going to be leaving the country? I sure am. I thought that you should be the first person that I give the heads up to. We can't be having this. How could you do this to us? You gotta stay here. What do you mean I have to stay there? Well, uh, you've been paying the rent here, right? 
What are you going to do for the months that you aren't here? Well, uh, yeah, that's actually the thing that I wanted to talk to you about. I kind of won't be paying the rent. It just doesn't really make sense to. Are you kidding me right now? So you expect me to pay your part of the rent then? Well, yeah, is that too much of an ask? I shouldn't be gone too long. It's only going to be one month. But that's four weeks of rent that's going to be left up to me. Do you really think you can escape rent like that? Not under my roof, buddy. Well, I'm not really sure what to tell you. This is my brother we're talking about. I want to see him. If you want to see him that badly, how about you give me four weeks worth of rent? What? Are you serious right now? A whole four weeks? That is insane. Why should I do that? Well, if you have the money to pay for a flight ticket, surely you've got the savings for it. I don't think that's the issue right now, Barry. I'm not even going to be living in that house. Well, let me lay down how it's going to be from this point on. You pay me that four weeks of rent, or you can go on that trip and have no hopes of coming back. You got that? Give it some time and think over it. Actually, you know what? Come to think of it, why not? I'm sorry? I am confused right now. What do you mean by why not? I mean, why not go on your little exchange program? That was a quick change of attitude. I I'm okay to go over there then? Hey, uh, Barry, um, I was doing a little bit of thinking and you've really gone out of your way to stop the drinking lately. I don't think it's fair that I do something like this when you've been trying so hard. Maybe I can visit my brother another time. Oh, what are you talking about? That's silly. This is family, right? Of course you need to go see him. Just go. I don't mind. And you know what? Why only one month? I mean, you're going overseas, right? You may as well make the most of it. How about you stay there for two months instead? Are you serious right now, Barry? Two months? I mean, I would love to stay a little bit longer, but aren't things going to be chaos back at home? I mean, that's two months of rent that you're going to go without. I am really suspicious about this. I mean, why are you acting so nice all of a sudden? I thought you were totally against the idea of me going overseas. Yeah, well, you know what? I guess it's just my age. You get up there in age and you start to get jealous of people. I was also just a little bit grumpy at the time. I should have thought about things more rationally. There's nothing wrong with you going overseas. I gotta be honest, Barry. I've never seen you this nice before. Maybe you really are turning over a new leaf, huh? Well, how about this? I better get you a decent souvenir while I'm over there. Just as some way of saying thanks for doing this for me. Why would you do anything like that? Don't worry about it. All I want you to do is go have a ball over there. Have fun. Think of it as some little refresher before you come back here. I am talking to a different guy right now. Thanks, Barry. That means a lot. Well, wish me good luck. I sure will. I wish you the best of travels, uh, but keep your suitcase and belongings all packed up and tight. You don't know what people are like these days. They're sneaking all kinds of things into people's luggage. Uh, good morning, George. Or should I say good afternoon? <laughs> it's funny how these time differences work. I'm not sure if it's morning or night over there. Anyway, you've had a decent amount of time overseas. How are you finding it? It must be nice having a change of pace. Hey, Barry, uh, how are you going? Oh, this place is amazing. I rarely get the chance to go overseas, so it is really awesome. Not only that, but my brother is showing me around. He showed me the best places in the city. I've got a ton of photos that I'll be showing you guys when I get back. I hope one day I can take everyone here. Well, uh, that's good to see that you're enjoying yourself. Let me ask you a question. Uh, do you like it better over there or here? 
Well, uh, that's an interesting question. I have to be honest. I haven't been here for long, so I don't really know what the lifestyle is like. All I'm doing at the moment is experiencing the fun stuff. I can't really answer that if I'm honest. Well, come on. If you had to pick between the two, which one would it be? I'm not sure. Maybe here, I guess. Why do you ask? Well, George, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Oh boy, this isn't sounding good. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry to bring this on you while you're on vacation. I'm sure you're in a really good mood. I'd hate to spoil it. At the same time, if I don't tell you now, it could be complicated for you later on. Well, this sounds really serious. Okay, Barry, uh, tell me what's up. Let's start with the good news. I think good is a serious understatement. This is excellent news. It's a great decision for everyone. Given the circumstances, we've decided to sell the house and move out. Whoa! Are you kidding me right now, Barry? That's amazing! A new place? Well, that was super quick. What made you make a decision like this? Well, given the current circumstance where we have both my children studying, I thought we should move a little bit closer to the university. It would really save them a lot of time and give them some more hours to study. I thought it would be the best thing for everyone. That is a great decision. I mean, I feel bad about the house, though. That has been your family home for a long time now, right? Uh, that's right. I'm telling you now, I'm sure we're gonna miss the place. But if it's for my children, I'm gonna do what I have to do. That's awesome stuff to hear, Barry. Honestly, their lives are gonna change from this point on. But seeing as it's closer to the university, the rent is going to be more expensive, right? Uh, you don't need to worry about that. It's only going to be a little bit more expensive than what we usually are paying. It's not going to be a drastic impact on our finances. Well, uh, then this really is a good deal. Good job at finding a place like that. Okay, so let's hear the bad news then. Well, uh, the bad news is that you aren't going to be joining us. I'm sorry, what did you just say? That's right. Uh, we can't have you with us, George. We don't want someone dangerous like you living with us. You don't want someone dangerous living with you? In what way am I dangerous? I'm a painter. You're a lot more than that, aren't you? What do you mean I'm a lot more than that? I don't see what you're getting at, Barry. We found illicit substances in your car. What did you just say? Don't act like you don't know about this. That's an insane accusation right there. What do you mean there were illicit substances in my car? Well, here's the thing, George. Before you left on your trip, you said that Nikki was allowed to use your car, right? It's your way of saying sorry for deleting his video game. I didn't do that, that was you. Oh, just shut up. Anyway, he needs to get his hours up to eventually get his full license. Now, I'm not much of a good driver myself because of the leg accident and whatnot, but I'm still able to teach him. I went out for a drive with him once. Okay, and I'm assuming this is when you found drugs in my car? That's right. When we got into your car, it was an absolute bomb. I mean, that thing was stinky. Do you ever clean that thing? I clean it every month. I air it out all the time. It shouldn't stink at all. Yeah, well, clearly you haven't been doing a good job enough of that. We got into the car and it was putrid. Before we set out to drive, we thought there might be some air fresheners in the glove box. We opened it up and it was pretty much empty, except for a brown paper bag. A brown paper bag? What is that? You tell me. Seeing as there was nothing else in that glove box, we decided to look into that bag. And we found some interesting substances in there. Care to admit what you've been up to in your spare time, George? What in the hell? I have no idea what I'm listening to right now. This is insane. Are you making this up? You're lying about this, aren't you? Hey, look, I had Nikki in the car with me. 
You can ask him if you want some proof of what happened. He saw it with his own eyes. He looked into that bag. We all know what you are now. This is just nuts. I don't know anything about this. I don't use any stuff. I've got no idea what this brown paper bag is. I gave my car a clean before I left. I knew you guys were going to use it. There was nothing that matches the description of a brown paper bag, especially in the glove box. You're not looking very innocent, George. I mean, a brown paper bag doesn't just magically appear in a glove box. Someone would have put it in there. And the only one that has your keys is you. Okay, so what you're saying is that you found something in my car and you think that I was the one that put it in there. And now you guys don't want me to move in with you? What a joke. This is ridiculous. Well, look, the jury is out. I've had a talk with everyone. I've talked to Nikki and he's lost all respect for you. First you delete his file and now you're into drugs? I talked with Natalie and she's absolutely dumbfounded. I talked with my wife and she almost had an early grave. I am telling you right now, George, we all thought better of you. We didn't think that you were this type of person. I am not this type of person. This is crazy. You know what? You know I wouldn't be doing this type of thing. Well, who knows? All those times you kept saying that you need to go to work? What were you actually doing? Who were you really seeing? No one can say for sure. This is stupid. Everyone is against me. I have got nothing to do with this. So all of you are going to start moving out then, right? That's right. I'm coming back home. I need to see what is going on. What the hell is going on here? Let me into my house. What are you guys doing in there? I know someone's in there. Why have you locked the doors? You're not coming into this house anymore. Dad, we've had enough of you. We've reached our limit. What do you mean you've reached your limit? What exactly have I done? I've been doing good things for my family. I'm moving us out of a home that's closer to your university. Just what is wrong with you? You tried to frame George. You tried to make him out to be someone he's not. The reality is you were that person. What are you talking about? Natalie, he had stuff in his car. He's lied to everyone. He's corrupt. You're the corrupt one. He showed me the dash cam footage. I'm sorry? The dash cam footage. Yeah, Dad. He's got cameras in his car. Didn't you see? One of his cameras detects movement. They activate and start capturing whatever is on film. There's clear footage of you walking towards his car with a brown paper bag. The footage after that is set on a later day where you and Nikki are driving together. You planted that stuff in his car. Don't try and lie to us. All right, come on, Natalie. You don't actually believe that. You know how kids are these days. There are a bunch of whiz kids that can create any type of footage and make it look like it's real. Do you really think your father would do something like that? Of course I do. We found everything. Mom was absolutely horrified that you actually did that. She started looking around the room to see if there was any more of it. You have ten bags just like that, filled with stuff. You're a bad person, Dad. I can't believe you're actually using this stuff. I don't know you anymore. I can't call you my dad. You're not coming into this house again. After all this time, you put down George for being a horrible human being. I can't believe you could be such a hypocrite. This is insane. I need to talk to Nikki. He'll back me up. He knows this is all going to be a bunch of crap. I know there is no way he'll side with George. He respects his father. I'm here with Natalie. Dad, don't come in here. I can't believe you did this. Nikki, is that you? Oh, don't listen to what's going on. That guy turned you against me. He's trying to tear this family apart. 
Just what the hell happened to you, Dad? You used to be cool. Used to be awesome. How could you be someone like this? Why do you hate George so much? And none of this makes sense. All he's done is be a good guy and help everyone out. Even Mom likes him. What do you have against him so much? Look, oh, whatever is between me and him is none of your business. This is adult stuff. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm 18 years old. I'm an adult now. You have to make George out to be like a bad guy, but let's take a look at the facts. You're the one that's been abusing him this whole time. He's been nothing but nice to me, and you've been nothing but cruel to him. I mean, you actually threw a beer bottle at his head? What if you actually killed him? Dad, what would you do then? Do you want to go to jail? Look, son, uh, Nikki, uh, you have to listen to me. Uh, this is complicated. It's not complicated. You have something against him. So what is it? What is it that you hate so much about him? Fine. Uh, you really want me to say it? He's way too close to you. What did you just say? Yeah, uh, that's it. You and I barely even talk to each other. You come home from school and you just go straight to your room. It's been this way ever since you've gotten into high school. You and I don't do anything together. Don't you remember the good times when you and I used to hang out with each other like father and son? I missed those days. You were such a good kid back then. Now this George character comes into the picture. You hang out with him even more than you hang out with me. I'm your own father. How can you do that to me? So that's what this is all about, is it? Do you think just because we don't hang out anymore, that means I don't respect you, Dad? I'm growing up. I'm not a little kid anymore. My interests have changed. I can't believe it. It doesn't matter how close I get to George. He's not a replacement for you. He's not my father. Well, it's clear you like him more than me. He's just my friend, Dad. How could you get jealous over something like that? I don't even want to talk to you. Especially knowing that you actually brought that stuff into our house. This whole time you've been playing the hero and you've actually been the villain. Look, uh, let me get back into the house and we can sort everything out. I'm sorry it's turned out this way. You and I are never talking again. Well, uh, what do you expect me to do? We're moving to a new house soon, aren't we? We're about to have a discussion with Mom, Natalie, and George. We're gonna think of a solution. Great, so uh, George is taking my place, isn't he? This is just fantastic. Let me into the house. I'm gonna show him a thing or two. Come on, Nikki. Open this door. Open this damn door. Nikki! No one could really look at Barry the same after that. His son lost all respect for him and his wife lost all emotion. Natalie didn't even want to talk about him. We moved into the new house as planned, but we didn't let him in. He had to rent out an apartment on his own. He also paid for the rent at ours. Full price too. He begged and pleaded for us to let him back into the family, but we didn't budge. Natalie and I came to the conclusion that he would need to work for something like that to happen. We told him that he should contribute money towards us fulfilling the dream that we had when we were kids. We made the arrangement that he would start giving us money to put towards Natalie's dream. When she and I were in high school, we came up with the idea that we should open up a kindergarten together. She would gain the necessary knowledge to open up one, and I would gain the money for it. That's why I became a painter. We put Barry back into employment and did the calculations. We put him on a very strict lifestyle of barely being able to get by and also giving us money. He doesn't have any more money for alcohol or any other substances that he might be using. I'm sure he's working and struggling every day, thinking about how much he stuffed up. As for everyone else, home life is much better without him. Natalie and Nikki are focusing on their studies, and I work stress-free. Nikki and I are still closer than ever. It's unfortunate that his dad deleted that save file. 
There was a time when Nikki was giving me a weird attitude because he thought I was the one that actually deleted it. Fortunately, this all had a positive effect on him. He realized his dad kind of had a point, and he should probably stop playing games. He's now getting into a lot more athletic activities to try and recreate the person that his dad used to be. I have to be honest, that wasn't really my thing, but he's kind of gotten me into the groove of it. Him and I are now doing runs together in the morning. As for Natalie, our relationship couldn't be more stronger. She's only got a couple of years left in university. All of her hard work is really starting to pay off, and I'm really excited to finally open up our business. Just give it a little bit more time, and it's gonna be a dream come true. Hey, Denise. I'm really looking forward to our camping trip this weekend. It's been a while since we managed to have a getaway like this. Thanks for organizing this. I'm really happy that you're doing this for me. I'm looking forward to it too. I haven't gone camping since I was a little child. I've been wanting to go for a while, but didn't really know where to start. This should be a great experience for us. I also wanted to go somewhere with a lot of nature. City life was kind of tiring me out these days. I also love the fact that we get to spend some time together. I feel like you've been really busy recently. You come back home pretty late most days. I was getting a little worried because you started to feel distant. It's been lonely. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Just been caught up in work recently. I'm sure things will get better over time. I do want to spend more time with you. I'll do my best so that I can be with you more often. You don't have to worry at all. I can understand why I felt a little distant. I'll work on it. We're gonna be completely alone for three days and two nights. I'm sure we'll feel a little closer to each other. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks for taking some time for me like this. I can't wait till this weekend. It's only two more days to go. Let's start getting everything ready so we don't forget anything. Yeah, let's do that. I'll get a list ready so that we don't forget anything. That was so much fun. I had a great time out there, but I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm glad to be back in the city now. Did you have a good time too? Yeah, I did have a good time, but I'm a little mad at you. We finally had some time to ourselves in nature, but you were on your phone for over half the time. I thought that this was meant to be like a romantic getaway for us. It didn't really feel that way to me. Who were you even talking to the entire time? You had a weird grin on your face every time your phone notification rang. I thought we were taking this trip so that we could have some time alone. You're just overreacting. I was only texting from time to time. It wasn't just one person, you know. Although one of my close friends is looking to change jobs, so I was giving her advice. That's why I had no choice but to text her back. Anyway, I don't think that it's something you should be angry about. We spent plenty of time together over the past few days. Well, it certainly didn't feel like it. You were spending most of your time with your phone. What's even the point of camping in nature if you're just gonna do that? Also, you were texting a girl the entire time? Should I be worried? I told you that we were only talking about work stuff. It's nothing that you need to worry about. You're just being paranoid. Anyway, I gotta get going now. I gotta go see someone. Wait, what? We haven't finished talking though. I want you to show me a little more effort. I feel like our relationship isn't as strong as before. Also, where are you going and who are you going to see? Yeah, I'll do my best to try to make you feel more loved. I promise. Oh, it's just a work friend, kinda. Anyway, gotta go. Charles? You have some explaining to do to me. What is this? I found something on your shirt. What are you talking about, Denise? You found something on my shirt? It's probably just some dirt or something, no? It looks like lipstick to me! How did that get there? Your shirt also smells of perfume as well. You didn't go sleep with another woman, did you? You need to stop being so paranoid about this kind of stuff. You overthink things and come to these stupid conclusions. I haven't been cheating on you, so there's no need to worry. The red mark could basically be anything. I think it's my blood, actually. I was scratching at some scabs and some blood might have gotten onto my shirt. I told you to stop doing that! It's gross and unhygienic, you know! 
This stain doesn't look like blood to me, though. It looks like lipstick to me. I'm still suspicious of you. Please just stop accusing me of this. It's just a stain. I don't think it's anything for you to worry about. I actually think I remember where that came from now. I think my lips were dry at work, so I might have borrowed some lip balm from one of my co-workers. You borrowed lip balm from your co-worker? That's not normal at all! It's basically kissing if you share a lip balm! Also, why would you use red lip balm? I really find this hard to believe. I think it might have been that. I really can't remember that well because work's been so busy recently. My mind is a little hazy. It could have been something else. I really don't think there is any need for you to be so suspicious of me. It could literally be anything. I really wish that you'd just trust me more, you know? I've always been really truthful to you. It still feels like you're hiding something from me. Come on, spit it out. I just told you that I don't remember where it came from. Would you please stop pestering me about this? So you're just gonna try to pretend that it never happened? I know that you're close to a lot of women. You have a lot of female friends and co-workers and that makes me really paranoid. Do you think it was from one of those women? Have you seen any of your female friends recently? I really doubt it's actually lipstick, but yeah, I did see one of my friends a little while ago. She had something to talk to me about, so we went out and had dinner. That was it, though. Wait, why didn't you tell me about this? I thought we made a rule that we'd tell each other if we were seeing people of the other gender. I always make sure to tell you if I'm seeing one of my male friends. Why can't you do the same? I guess I just didn't have the time to tell you. She just called me out of the blue, and I forgot to mention it to you until now. Her name is Cindy, by the way. It really wasn't anything to worry about, though. She just wanted to talk to me about her career. We both do some programming for our jobs, so I just gave her some advice. I think she's looking to find a new job in the field. I'm sorry that I hadn't gotten around to telling you about it yet. I'll let you know if it happens again. You better let me know if it's gonna happen. These things really matter to me. I won't be able to trust you if this kind of thing keeps on happening. Anyway, about the lipstick stain. Do you think that it was her? I told you that I doubt it's lipstick. Although she did cry that day, and I hugged her to try to cheer her up. That might have been how some lipstick got rubbed onto my shirt. I was wearing the shirt on that night too, after all. I really can't remember that well. I assure you that nothing else happened. She was crying because she was really stressed out with her career. I think it's difficult for women to work in the programming field, as it's mostly men. I just try to comfort her as a friend. That was it. Now you're telling me that you hugged her? How could you do that to me? I don't want you seeing her ever again. Do you promise that nothing else happened? I don't understand why you keep revealing more and more disturbing information like this to me. I promise that nothing else happened. I came home pretty early that night. I'm just really close to her as I've known her ever since middle school. We've always supported each other through tough times. We also work in the same field, so that's why we're close. You can't ask me to not see her again. She's a good friend. Can you please just trust me? I promise that we're just platonic friends. You need to at least tell me when you see her alone. I really don't want you to misunderstand. There is nothing going on between me and her. You don't have to worry about a thing. You can be rest assured that I only have eyes for you. Denise, you're the love of my life. I promise that I'd never betray you by cheating on you. Okay, fine. I'll believe you. Please just be a little more careful from now on. I'll go put your shirt in the wash for you then. Hey, Charles. Where are you? I thought that you'd be home by now. Dinner's ready, so make sure that you get back as soon as possible. Denise, I'm really sorry about this. I didn't have time to contact you yet. Something came up and I need to stay here until late. I'm really sorry that this has happened again. I've got to finish programming the script for one of our customers before I go home tonight. I finished it this afternoon, but some errors came up and I'm trying to fix it. So you're going to be late again? This is happening way too often recently. Good luck with your work, I guess. You want me to leave your dinner in the fridge then? I'll heat it up for you when you get back home. Actually, there's no need for that. 
I'm going to get something delivered to the office. I don't need you to make anything for me. Well, I've already made dinner for us, but okay. I guess we can eat it tomorrow. Also, one more thing. Once I finish with work, I won't be coming straight home either. I've got to stop by somewhere. Remember the girl called Cindy that we spoke about the other day? She is having a birthday party tonight, so I'm going to go to that. I was told that there were going to be a whole bunch of people there. I'm going to stop by to congratulate her and give her a gift. She's a close friend, after all. I won't stay there for too long. You are going to meet that girl again? Why do you keep going to see her? Also, if it's a birthday party, you could have told me about it in advance. I wouldn't have prepared dinner tonight if it were the case. I actually don't feel comfortable with you going. It's not going to be just me and her this time. There will be a lot of people there. There's no need for you to be uncomfortable with it. It's meant to be a house party, so there's really no reason for you to worry. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to tell you. I just forgot about it. How could you forget, though? I just told you pretty recently that I get paranoid about you seeing other women. I asked you to tell me these things in advance. Well, I'm not going to be alone with a girl, so I didn't think I needed to tell you. You need to stop being so paranoid about everything. I won't drink too much and I'll come straight home to see you. I promise I won't be late. You don't have to wait for me to go to bed, though. I might not get back before you go to sleep, but I won't disturb you. Why don't you invite me to the party, then? Can I come with you? I'm sure Cindy would be very happy to meet me. That would make me feel a little better about this. Wait, what? You want to come as well? Why not? You have told me that you are really close to this girl. You've known her for such a long time, right? I kind of want to be able to get to know her if possible. If she's your friend, then I might be able to become friends with her too. I'm sure she'd be happy to meet me too. It's a house party with lots of people coming, right? I'm sure that you can bring a guest along. Oh, well, I don't know about that. I'm not going to stay there for long, so you don't have to come, you know. It's okay. I want to come, even if it's just for a short while. I know most of your friends, but I've never met Cindy before. She seems to be really close to you, so I'd love to meet her and get to know her. Oh, right. I'm not sure if this is the best idea. Like, I'm not sure when I'm going to finish work yet. It just doesn't seem very realistic for you to come. You can just let me know when you finish work. I don't understand what the problem would be. It's her birthday, right? It's the perfect day to meet her. I can wish her a happy birthday and get to know her a little bit better. I'd love to meet her face to face after hearing about her from you. Don't you think it might be a little bit awkward? Why would it be awkward? I thought you guys are just platonic friends. Well, yeah, we're definitely platonic friends, but I just don't know if it's a good idea. You've never met her before, and it's her birthday. She might want to celebrate with just her friends, you know? She might not want strangers to be there. I think it's best if we just keep it to people she knows. I don't think it will be awkward at all. I'm your wife. You must have told her about me, right? I wouldn't be like a complete stranger either. I'll make sure to stay by your side and you can introduce me to everyone there. Well, I guess so. I'll send her a message and see what she says then. Okay, great. Tell me where it's happening and I'll get ready. I can meet you outside of your workplace and we can go together. Okay, if you really want to do this, then I guess we can. I'll send you the address shortly. She told me that it's okay for me to bring you along. Great, I'll see you soon. I'll go and pick out some nice clothes then. Hey, Denise! I've heard so much about you. It's so nice to finally meet you after all this time. I've been friends with Charles ever since middle school. Thanks for coming today, by the way. Hey, Cindy. Nice to meet you, too. I've heard a lot about you, too. He seems to really like you as a platonic friend. I didn't realize that he had a female friend that he was so close to. I suppose it's natural when you've known someone for so long. It's great to finally get to meet his wife. I was curious to see the kind of woman he ended up marrying. He has always been pretty popular with women, and he talked to me about them pretty openly, too. What do you mean by that? Well, he just talked to me about his girlfriends and asked me for advice and other stuff. It was pretty fun for me to get to hear all the drama, too. 
There must be a lot of women that are jealous of you. If I were you, I'd be careful. Someone might try to steal him from you. <laughs> are you serious? I had no idea he was so popular amongst women. Oh, don't worry. I was half joking. Just trying to mess with you. Also, you're married to him, so there's no need for you to be paranoid at all. I would consider yourself lucky for being able to marry a guy like him, though. Yes, I do agree that I'm lucky to be able to get married to him. Anyway, let's stop talking about this. I'm here to wish you a happy birthday. I hope that you have a great year. Hey, thanks so much. I'm glad that you could come. It's a pleasure to meet you. So anyway, when are the other people going to get here? I was told that it was going to be a fairly large house party. They told me that they had something come up so they couldn't come. It's really unfortunate, but there's not much I can do about it. So yeah, I'm really, really glad that you were able to come. Now I won't have to spend my birthday alone with just Charles. Oh, that would just be a huge nightmare after all. Wait, so everyone can't come all of a sudden? What a huge coincidence. Yeah, that would have been pretty terrible. You don't want to be alone with him on a day like this. Oh, hey, would I be able to borrow some of your lipstick? I forgot to bring mine. My lipstick? Oh yeah, sure. Go ahead and use this one. I knew it! So it was you! I found a lipstick stain on Charles's shirt the other day, and it was the same color as this. Could you tell me what happened between you guys? I'd like to hear your side of the story, too. Oh, I had no idea about the stain. I'm sorry, but I don't really know if that was me at all. I guess it could have been me, as I cried a lot the last time I went to dinner with him. I got emotional after talking about my career, and he hugged me to comfort me. I think it could have rubbed off onto his shirt during that time. Nothing else happened, though. I promise. We're just platonic friends. Well, I guess your story matches up to him. I trust you guys. I'm glad that he has a close friend like you that he can trust. I'm glad that you think of us that way. I'm sure that we can get along well, too. I feel really comfortable talking to you, even though we just met. Did he tell you when he was going to get here, by the way? Well, we were planning to come together, but he told me to go ahead as his work is taking longer than he thought. He was talking about some programming script having an error or something. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. I hate having to fix things like that. Oh, yeah, I forgot that you're also a programmer, too. Yeah, we work in the same field, so I'm always asking him for advice for work. That's one of the reasons why we're so close. He's a great programmer, and he teaches me so much. It's nice to have a guy like that I can trust and ask for help. The guys I work with are really like that. My workplace is full of guys, and I haven't been able to make many new friends at work. I guess it can't be helped because it's a male-dominated field. That must be pretty difficult for you. I think that it's amazing that you're a programmer. That's so cool of you. I'm sure that you're going to have a great career in the future. Thanks for the kind words. It means a lot. Hey, it'd be great if we could hang out more as well. I think that we could really get along well. Yeah, me too. I feel like we've already known each other for a long time. I think you're just the kind of person I could be friends with. I think so too. I can see why Charles decided to get married to you too. You could come over to my place next time and we can have a talk and drink some wine maybe. You can tell me all about your life and I'll tell you about mine. I'd love to hear your stories. Really? Great. Just send me an invite and I'll be there. I'm free most days after work. Okay, yeah, I will do. I look forward to it. You two seem to have taken a liking to each other. I'm glad that you guys were able to get along well. Yes, we got along really well. It was really nice getting to meet Cindy. I think we can become pretty good friends from now on. I told her that she can come over to our house for some drinks sometime soon. I'd like to get to know her better. Great. We can all have drinks together then. I should have introduced you to her a long time ago. I didn't know that you guys were going to get along so well. I was actually really worried before meeting her. Especially because you were running late and I was completely alone with her at the start. What were you worried about exactly? I was just worried that you were getting too close to her. I thought it's basically impossible to be platonic friends with someone that you spend so much time with. 
That's why I wanted to get to know her, to see what kind of person she was. There is nothing going on between us. We've just known each other for such a long time. It's almost like we're family. I guess she's kind of like a sister to me. That's the best way to explain it, I think. Yeah, I know that. I believe you now. Especially after meeting her and talking to her. She seemed like a really trustworthy and sweet girl. Well, I hope that you can trust us from now on. There really is nothing to be concerned about. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. I can understand why you treasure her as a friend. She's really sweet. She's also pretty too, though. I don't really pay attention to her appearance because I've known her for so long. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you like her. Who wouldn't like her? She's a really nice person and easy to talk to. I'm happy to hear that you have such a good opinion of her. She is a nice girl, but not everyone likes her. Maybe you and her were made to be friends. I think we are going to be great friends. I think we'll be seeing a lot of each other. I'll invite her over soon and we can both spend some time with her. Yeah, feel free to have her over whenever you want. I've been looking for someone to be good friends with for a while now. It's kind of hard to find new friendships now that I'm an adult. I just feel I've lacked a really close female friend. I think Cindy might just be the person I was looking for. You always told me that she was like family to you. If I make good friends with her too, then I think that will be good for all of us. I think you've got a good point there. Let's hope things go well between you two. Although there was one thing that kind of caught me off guard. What is it? Well, I thought it was meant to be a house party with a lot of people coming. She told me that all her friends canceled on her at the last minute. Don't you think that's a little suspicious? Oh, it's probably just a huge coincidence. I mean, these things happen sometimes, you know. I wouldn't think too deeply about it. I was really surprised to hear about it, too. I never would have expected it. It was great that you managed to show up, wasn't it? Hey, Denise! Thanks for inviting me out today. I sure do love to go shopping. The ice skating we did was great, too! It was so much fun. Thanks for coming, too. I've not had this much fun in a long time. I really couldn't stop laughing when you fell over while ice skating, though. <laughs> I felt bad, but it just looked so funny. I'm glad that you seem to be okay, though. Oh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> I'm meant to be an elegant princess, remember? Just forget that I fell. <laughs> it wasn't my best moment. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to erase that moment from my mind. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I really like the underwear that you bought today. It was absolutely bomb. Oh yeah, I love it too. I wanted to impress my boyfriend this weekend. I know that he's gonna love it. Oh, you have a boyfriend? I didn't even know about that. You should have told me about it. He's gonna absolutely love it. It's gonna look great on your body. Oh, didn't I tell you about him? Sometimes it just slips my mind. We've been together a while and things are going pretty well between us. I don't know if it's going to lead to a marriage, but I'm having a fun time for now. I can't be doing this forever though. <laughs> a lot of my friends are getting married around me. I'd love to find my guy soon. Maybe it's time to start thinking about it more seriously. You shouldn't have anything to worry about. I'm sure there are guys lining up to get married to you. <laughs> You're perfect. You're good looking and nice. You must get on with people really well. I've never felt so comfortable talking to someone. I'm sure there are lots of guys who are interested in you. You'll just have to choose the one you like. You're too nice to me. <laughs> it's really not that easy for me at all. This is the first boyfriend that I've had in a while, you know. Although we have been dating a while. How long have you two been together for? I think it must be about two years now. It feels like it was yesterday when we first met. I can't believe how fast time goes by. Two years? Wow, that's a long time. Have you thought about getting married to him? I presume that you do want to get married at some point, right? I'm actually hoping that we get married soonish. It's come up in our conversation a couple of times. I've always dreamed of my own wedding, so I get excited just thinking about it. There's this venue that I've had my eyes on for a while now. I really hope that it works out for you guys. I hope that you get to have the wedding that you've always dreamed of having. You also need to introduce me to your boyfriend someday. We can go on a double date or something. A double date? Well, yeah, I guess we can figure something out. So 
So anyway, what do you think of the underwear I got today? Do you think he'll like it? Of course he's gonna love it. True, true. He always compliments me, so I hope he likes this too. Your boyfriend sounds like he's really sweet. Maybe I should buy some underwear too. I might go back to the store that you bought yours at earlier today. I kind of regret not grabbing a pair for myself. Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. I think Charles would really like the red one. Why do you think he would like it? I think it's a little weird for you to know his preferences, no? Oh, I just meant men in general like red. <laughs> I didn't specifically mean just Charles. Anyway, I definitely recommend that you buy a pair from that store. It's my favorite. I don't usually wear things like this, but I think it might be fun. You seem to know how to impress men more than I do. Maybe I should follow your lead and get the same one as you. I don't think he'd like that. I think he'd want something a bit more bold and extravagant. You think so? I don't really know myself. Maybe I should try explore one of the more extravagant ones. You seem to know what you're talking about, so maybe I should take your advice. I'm sure anything from that store would suit you. Just pick the one you like the most. I suppose you're right. It's just that I don't usually buy underwear. I'm a bit boring when it comes to things like that. You should definitely put work into your underwear. You really need to work to keep his attention, you know. He's gonna get bored of you if you don't spice things up. Maybe you're right about that. I think I'll go back to the store and grab something then. Thanks for the advice. I'll grab something that's red and extravagant, like you said. Yeah, good idea. Most men like that style. They don't want something boring. They want something really wild. Anyway, it was really nice going out with you today. Let's do this again sometime soon. I also want to do some more outdoor activities like rock climbing. You seem to be into outdoor stuff too, right? Yeah, let's do something like that next time then. Thanks for today. I really enjoyed it too. I'll message you again soon. You went shopping with Cindy today, right? How was it? Did you guys have fun? It was great fun. We went to the mall to shop and we did some ice skating too. I wish that you came along with us. She fell over and it was so funny. <laughs> I did feel sorry for her, but she seemed to be okay. Wait, she fell over? Is she okay? Did she injure herself badly? Yeah, I told you that she was fine. You seem to be really worried about her. She's a friend, so I was just worried. Anyway, what did you guys end up buying at the mall? I was going to keep it a secret, but I just can't resist. I bought some new underwear. What do you think? Whoa, they look amazing. So you like them? What do you think? Yeah, I love them. What made you decide to buy them? You never really buy underwear like that. Cindy bought some underwear from the store, and I thought it was really cute. I ended up going back to the store to buy a pair. It was her idea, and she suggested the style. She told me that you would really like it. She seemed to know a lot about you and what you would like. Oh, so that's why you bought them. It really does look amazing on you. It's exactly my type. I guess she was right. She knows exactly what you like. I don't know how to feel about this. I wonder how she became so familiar with your taste in underwear. It must be because we've known each other for such a long time. She must know what I want. I also think most men would like this kind of thing. I think that she just recommended something pretty generic to you. You don't need to think about this too deeply. I guess so. Oh yeah, did you know that she has a boyfriend? I didn't even know myself. I was a bit surprised because neither of you had told me about it. I told her that we should go on a double date at some point. Wait, wait, what? She has a boyfriend. Did she really say that to you? You didn't know about it either? You seem pretty shocked. She told me that they've been together for two years now and that they plan on getting married. Did she really tell you that? She told you that she has a boyfriend. Yeah, that's what I just said. I'm surprised that she hasn't told you before. I thought you and her were really close. Do you guys not talk about relationships at all? I really need to talk to her about this. I had no idea at all. Maybe she just wanted to keep it to herself. Not everyone likes to talk about their relationships after all. 
That's strange because she told me about it when I asked her. She told me that they are going to get married soon. I wonder why she was keeping the whole thing a secret from you. Did she really tell you all this stuff? Like this isn't a joke. She seems to be quite open with you. Yeah, she definitely told me this. She told me that they were thinking of getting married soon. She seemed to be really excited for her wedding too. She told me that she wanted it to be really special and that she already had a venue in mind. It's nice to see that you and her are getting on so well. It's good to see that she can tell you about these things. It also seems like you and her are getting closer and closer. You know her better than me. I guess it's because we are both women. Maybe she feels she can be more open with me. Hey, Denise. Is it true that you're going to get a divorce? Alex? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Where did this come from? Such a strange question to ask out of the blue. I am not getting a divorce from Charles. Why did you think that I was? Well, there are some rumors going around and wanted to check with you. I really don't know where these rumors have come from, but they're not true at all. Okay, I'm sorry that I even asked. I probably shouldn't have poked my nose into your business. I'm sorry, but could you just tell me where you heard these rumors from? I'd like to get to the bottom of this if possible. So it wasn't exactly a rumor, I guess. You know that I work at a wedding venue, right? Well, yeah, I do know about that. I heard that you work at a pretty nice one, too. Well, there were some customers that came to my wedding venue that I really didn't expect. I'm telling you this is your friend, by the way. Usually I shouldn't be giving away my customers' personal information like this. Do you promise to keep the fact that I told you this a secret? Yeah, I promise. Just tell me who the customers were. Well, one of the customers was your husband, Charles. The woman that he was with was someone that I didn't know. I only recognized him because I see him on your social media posts from time to time. He has no idea who I am. Anyway, they came to inquire about dates when they could hold their wedding. They seemed to be in a rush to get their wedding done. They were asking for the earliest dates possible. That's why I asked if you had gotten a divorce from him. Wait, what? I had no idea about this at all! Are you really sure that it was my husband that came to you? We're happily married, and he's not the kind of guy that would cheat on me. Well, I'm pretty sure it's him. Even his name was Charles. This is a picture of them taking a look around the wedding venue. You can't really see the woman, but you can see the man's face pretty clearly. So, what do you think? That really is him! I recognize the clothes that he's wearing. Just what in the world is happening? I really wasn't expecting this. Do you have any better pictures that might show me the woman? How about this one? I think you can see half of her face. Do you recognize her at all? Oh! I do recognize her! It's Cindy! My husband is really good friends with her. She's going to get married to her boyfriend soon. Thank God! You had me worried for a second! I don't need to worry about them two being together. They're just platonic friends. I suppose my husband had gone with her to help her make her decision. They are pretty close after all. Oh, so you know her. Good friends. It looked like more than that to me. Are you sure that you're not being tricked by them? I'm sorry to tell you this, but it seems like he's having an affair with that other woman. No, they're just good friends. They've known each other for years and years. I'm close to her too. We've started to become really good friends recently. I even go shopping with her from time to time. She told me that they're just platonic friends too. You're being a little too trustful, I think, Denise. They really weren't just platonic friends. They literally couldn't keep their hands off of each other when they were touring around the venue. They were kissing each other every single time they got a chance. It was kind of uncomfortable showing them around. They are going to get married together. He is the groom and she is the bride. I saw the application as well. The two of them are definitely getting married. You're wrong. You've got to be wrong somehow. There's no way the two of them would do this to me. Even when the two of them go out together, they say that nothing sexual ever happens. I'm sure there's just been a mistake or something. Denise, I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to accept the reality. If the two of them were spending time alone together, then it's most likely not just a platonic friendship. I know what I saw. I didn't get it wrong. 
You really need to get to the bottom of this. All I know is that the two of them are going to get married together soon, and they seem to be madly in love with each other. It might sound crazy, but that's what's going to happen. You need to figure out what's happening behind your back. I hate the fact that a fraudulent wedding like this is trying to take place at this wedding venue. I also hate the fact that he's cheating on you because you're a good friend and a good person. That's why I decided to warn you about this. Are you really sure about all of this? Like, 100% positive? Yes, I am sure about it. They have already booked a date for their wedding. I'm just lost for words. I can't believe that I really trusted them. I met Cindy in person, and she was just the nicest person in the world. I thought that I could trust her with all my heart. That's how all people that cheat act. They're not going to just admit that they're cheating. It's obvious to me what's going on. That girl has stolen your husband behind your back. They are going to get married together. I think he might suddenly ask to get a divorce from you soon and leave you for that girl. You need to be really careful about this now. It's a dangerous situation for you. Oh, God. I'm just lost for words. What should I do now? I don't really know what you should do from here. However, the fact that you found out about this in advance should be an advantage for you. You need to gather up evidence and try to find a lawyer or someone to help you out. I'll start off by talking to a lawyer or something. You just pretend that you haven't told me about this. If they come back to you, just carry on as normal. I will think of something to do to make them pay for this. I'm never going to forgive either of them for what they've done to me. Okay, I'll pretend to continue with their wedding plans then. I'll leave the rest to you. Yeah, please do that. Thanks so much for telling me about this, Alex. I need to gather up some evidence. I want to get to the bottom of this and find out what's going on. I need to know for sure. You think that you'll be able to collect evidence against them? I'm sure it'll be easy now that I know what's happening. I'm such a huge idiot! I should have realized that this was happening behind my back. It's so obvious in hindsight! Also, I need to know for sure what's going on. I don't want them to be suspicious of me. It will be easier for me to gather evidence if they don't know I'm coming for them. Okay, seems like a good idea to me. Be careful around that girl. I think she's a great actor. She probably just seems nice on the outside. If you need any help, then don't hesitate to call me. I will do whatever it takes to help you out here. Thanks so much for everything, Alex. If I need anything, then I'll get back in touch with you. Hey, Denise. Are you okay? Are you coping with everything? I'm okay. Thanks, Alex. I'm still completely shocked, but I've been active in doing what I have to do. I want to break down and cry, but the rage is helping me keep going. You're really strong for fighting this. I hope that you manage to get your revenge. I just wanted to let you know that your husband and the woman came to visit us again. What did they come to do this time around? They visited the venue along with their respective parents this time. I think that they wanted to show them the venue before the wedding preparations began. Surely their parents know about the affair, right? I can't believe that they're in on this too. Wait, are you for real? Even their parents came? Charles's parents should definitely know that I'm married to him. I wonder what he told them. Well, whatever he said to them worked. They didn't seem to have a problem with the marriage at all. They all seemed to be happy and really excited for the wedding. It was as if this was just going to be a normal wedding. I've never known anything like it. How could they plot such a thing? What did the parents say? Did they say anything that stood out to you? They didn't really say much. They were silent for the most part. It was mainly the woman who did all the talking. I think she's the leader in all of this. She seems to be a really devious character. I actually don't think her parents know that Charles is married to you. So you think that her parents don't know he's already married? I can't believe that they would lie about something so important. They seem to be really excited about their daughter getting married. They looked a little bit emotional at times. I think it must be a proud time for them. If only they knew the truth. I wonder how they'd react when they realize just what their daughter has done. I still can't believe this is all happening behind the scenes. I've not been able to look Charles in the eye for the past few days. He's acting like nothing is wrong at all. Cindy even asked me if I wanted to go to the movies with her this week. I can't believe they've been tricking me like this. It really makes my blood boil being treated like this. 
If they want to have the wedding, then surely he has to get divorced from you first. It would not be legal for him to marry another woman otherwise. I don't know how this can go ahead as it is. I presume someone is going to find out that he's already married at some point. Has he hinted that he wants to get a divorce from you yet, by the way? I mean, it's bound to happen at some point before the wedding happens. No, not at all. No hints like that at all. I don't know what's the truth and what's the lie at this point. Cindy told me that she has been with her boyfriend for two years already. She even told me that she was planning to get married to him. Actually, maybe she was talking about Charles the entire time. I know that they've been seeing each other ever since I got married to Charles. That was just over two years ago. He's probably been cheating on me with her from the very beginning. I was really paranoid the entire time, but he kept telling me not to worry. I really should have just listened to my instincts. Everything about this story is crazy. I've been working at a wedding venue for years, but I've never heard anything like this. Why does this have to happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? I really don't know how I'm ever going to recover from this. Try not to let it hurt you too much. You can recover from this. I know you can. All we need to do now is get as much evidence as possible. You deserve someone way better than Charles. You're beautiful and such a great person to be around, Denise. I've always thought that about you, ever since high school. You're right. Thanks for cheering me up, Alex. How could he do this and think he was going to get away with it? What was going on in his mind? I am not going to be silent about this. I'm going to teach him a lesson. I also can't forgive Cindy for pretending to be good friends with me. I really thought that she could become my best friend for a moment. I'm going to make them regret this for the rest of their lives. Evening, Denise. I'm going to be a bit late coming home tonight. I have something that I need to do. I don't know what time it's going to be when I finish. What is it that you're going to do, exactly? Like, could you explain why you're going to be home late? I'm going to dinner with Cindy. She wants to talk to me about some things related to work, so I'm going to be with her tonight. I hope it's not too much of a problem for you. We're just platonic friends, so there's nothing you need to worry about. You seem to be spending a lot of time with her the past few weeks. Why don't you invite me to come along with you? I am friends with her too, you know. Well, we're going to be talking about programming stuff. It's all work language. I just thought it might be a bit inconvenient for you too. It was all arranged at the last minute, so I didn't have time to tell you. It wouldn't be worth your time to come. You just stay at home and enjoy some time without me. I promise I'll be back before it's too late. Oh, also, I invited another few of my work friends to come out with us, too. It won't just be us. You told me that last time. You said that other people were coming, and then no one else showed up. That house party on Cindy's birthday would have been just the two of you if I hadn't have forced my way there. They were all busy and couldn't make it. They had something to do. It was all just a coincidence. I thought we talked about that a while back. Why are you bringing it up now? Don't you think it's a little bit strange that all those other people suddenly had something else to do? It was also her birthday. I doubt so many people would cancel last minute for something so important. What's wrong with you now? Are you in a bad mood or something? You're asking me a lot of strange questions. I really don't have anything else to tell you. You should know that me and Cindy are just platonic friends. Stop using that word over and over. It annoys me. I just want to know what you're doing tonight with her. You're going for dinner with Cindy? Is that all that's happening? That's what I've been telling you the entire time. Okay, I hope you have fun when you're there. Oh, could you ask her a question for me while you're there? Ask her when her wedding is going to be. I'm sure that she wants me to go too. We can attend her wedding together. It's going to be such a great day. I will ask her, but I don't think she's going to have a wedding with her boyfriend. I think that she was saying that it was going to be a low-key wedding if she did end up having one. It would just mostly be family and relatives. Really? Why does she want to do that? I thought she was going to have a big wedding. I don't think she wants a formal wedding. I don't think she likes that type of thing. Sounds really strange to me. What kind of woman doesn't want a wedding? The last time I talked to her about it, she seemed to want a large-scale wedding. I don't fully understand it either. Maybe she changed her mind about it. Who knows? Okay, never mind. I have another question. 
What are you doing in three weeks' time? I was wondering if you want to go on a vacation with me? I'm free during that week, and I saw some really cheap flight tickets to Guam. I was hoping we could have a beach getaway. What do you think? Good idea? You haven't taken any paid leave off from work for a while now. It's about time we had a relaxing vacation. In three weeks' time. I don't really think that's going to be a good time to go. Why did you suddenly think of this anyway? I just think it would be really nice if you and I got away for a while. I think we could have a really good time together. I feel like you've been spending more time with a certain someone recently. Oh, well, I'm not sure we can do that. I'll probably be busy, you know. I also don't know if I want to go to Guam that much. Why? Why not? Are you busy? You should have a lot of paid leave saved up. I can't go. I have to go on a business trip with work. It's been planned for a while, so I can't get out of it. You have a business trip? You didn't mention it to me. Why didn't you tell me about it if it was already decided? It would be nice to know these things as your wife. Sorry, it slipped my mind. We will have to go another time. Next few weeks is no good for me. Can't you just tell your workplace that you don't want to go and come on holiday with me? I'm sure that we'll have a great time together. I don't think that's a good idea. I might get in trouble at work if I do that. My boss would be really mad at me. I really enjoy my company, and I wouldn't want things to go badly with them. I'm sorry, but no vacations for a while. You seem to have an excuse for everything. I guess there's nothing I can do if you're going to be busy. We will have to go on holiday another time. I really wish that you'd pay a little more attention. Seems like I'm your third or fourth choice for everything. I'm really sorry about all this. Thanks for being so understanding. I will make it up to you sometime. I'll buy you something or take you out somewhere. I promise that you're always my number one priority. You're my precious wife after all. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Have you been up to much recently? I feel like we haven't talked much. Oh, hey, Denise. I've been pretty good, thanks. I was just with my boyfriend and now I'm on my way home. We had a really nice day together again. I think I'm falling more and more in love with him every time I meet him. Oh, really? That sounds fun. Nice to hear that you're getting along well with your boyfriend. Yeah, we had a really nice time together. I always do when I'm with him. I'm sure your husband is just as nice to you. How are you? Did you want to talk to me about something? No, I didn't have anything on my mind. I just wanted to talk to you. We're good friends and I feel like I can depend on you. It's nice of you to think of me like this. Anyway, tell me more about you guys. So you're really getting on well with your boyfriend? Having a nice time with him? Yes, I really am. I can't wait for us to be husband and wife. He does everything for me. If I want something, then he goes and does it without question. I feel really, really loved, and I can't wait for our wedding to finally happen. He sounds amazing. I'd love to meet him sometime. Maybe we could figure out a day to go have lunch or something together? So, you want to actually meet him? Really? Why do you want to do that? I just think it would be really nice to meet him. I've heard so much about him, and he really seems to be nice to you. I'd love to meet him myself and get to know what he's like. Charles hasn't met him either, so maybe the four of us could get together and talk. What do you think? Good idea? You're good friends with my husband, so I'd like to get along with your future husband. Well, yeah, that seems like a good idea. I'll have to try and arrange something. No guarantees, though. Anyway, we should definitely get together sometime this week. Just the two of us. Yes, yeah, sounds good. How would tomorrow be? I'm free all day. Tomorrow? I have an appointment at the tattoo shop, actually. I'm getting another tattoo done on my legs. Oh, that sounds really cool. Can I come watch? Are you going to get a tattoo yourself? Probably not, but I'd love to take a look at how they're done. Would you be okay with me coming? We can go to the cafe or something afterwards. Okay, yeah, I guess that would work. I'll send you the address to the shop later. Okay, great. I'm really looking forward to this. I've never seen a tattoo done live in my life before. I 
think that a tattoo would really suit you, actually. How about you try get one tomorrow? I think I'd want to think it through a little first. <laughs> Maybe in the future, though. Yeah, of course. Anyway, I guess I'll see you tomorrow, then. Thanks so much for holding my hand today at the tattoo shop. It was really nice for you to be there to support me. It's nothing. I'm happy I could help you out. Thanks for letting me come. It was a lot of fun to watch. I knew it was going to be really painful to get another tattoo. I didn't know if I could go through with it myself, but you really helped. How do you think it looked, by the way? I'm sure it'll look better once it's less swollen up. I really like the design of the rose. It suited you so much. You're gonna look even better with that tattoo. I'm sure of it. Thanks! Think I should get one on my arm, too? I'm kind of tempted to go back in and get one done on my arm, too. I mean, it's up to you, but I reckon it would suit you either way. I already have one designed for the arm. I figure I should just get all the painful stuff out the way today. Yeah, that might be a good idea, actually. You should go back to the tattoo shop and get it done. Actually, yeah, I think that I'm gonna do that. What is this? No! I can't believe that this has happened to me. Wait, what? What's wrong with you? Are you okay? Are you in pain? If you want me to, I can call an ambulance. That's not what I'm panicking about. That tattoo artist completely messed up the design. This isn't what I asked for at all. Look what it says on my arm. It says, cheater. Why the hell did he do this to me? It's so much bigger than I wanted that tattoo as well. I'm gonna sue this stupid shop. I can't go outside with a tattoo like this. I actually asked him to change the design to this after you went in the second time. I thought it would be really nice if I changed the design of the tattoo a little bit. I thought this would suit you more. I'm glad that the tattoo artist was foreign too. He didn't seem to understand much English. He was slightly shocked, but I said it was okay. I'm glad he went through with it. So you're the one that did this to me? What the hell is wrong with you? This is like the worst tattoo I've ever seen. How am I going to get this off? We need to do something as soon as we can. This tattoo covers my entire arm. People are going to think I'm some kind of crazy girl. You betrayed me. I thought that we were friends. Well, that's a rich coming from you. <laughs> Don't worry, the tattoo totally suits you. You should keep it forever. Why did you do this to me? Why? I thought that we were getting along really well. Do you think I don't know about your little secret? Do you think I don't know that you're cheating with my husband? Do you really think I wasn't going to find out? You've been lying to me all this time behind my back. You guys are getting married to each other in a few weeks time, right? Well, this is the beginning of my revenge. I'm gonna make you guys regret this so much. Wait, so you know about all of that? How did you find out about that? We didn't tell anyone about our secret. I thought that we had you completely fooled. You really are a crazy girl. Of course I was going to find out one day or another. You were not going to get away with having an affair with Charles. You guys were basically together every single day. I'm guessing that he managed to give it away somehow. Damn it. Why did you decide to take this out on me though? You should have blamed it on your husband. He's the one that's wrong. I'm innocent in all this. It's your husband who is cheating on you. I'm not cheating on anyone. Anyway, I'm not going to forgive you for this stupid tattoo. You've permanently scarred me. People are going to know what kind of girl you really are. The tattoo really suits you. You've also permanently scarred me emotionally. My life's been turned completely upside down by you. I can't believe that you pretended to befriend me while sleeping with my husband behind my back. I wish that you never would have been friendly to me. I thought that I had made a great friend for a little while. Now it feels even worse. Oh, shut up. I don't care about anything that you say right now. We need to find a way to get this tattoo off my arm. You need to pay for it too. What the hell am I meant to do with this? How can you remove a tattoo? I don't think it can be done. Tattoos are meant to be permanent after all. 
I think you're just going to have to live with it. I also took a photo of it and posted it online for you. I made sure to tag you in it alongside the story of what you did to me. I'm sure it's spreading around the internet as we speak. I think you're going to go viral over this. That would be funny, wouldn't it? You crazy woman! Why would you do something like that to me? You must be seriously mentally unstable or something. You need to reverse all this right now. It's not me who's crazy and stupid. It's you. You were crazy to think you could get away with doing what you did. I really wonder what your mother is going to think when she finds out the truth about you. Or does she already know? I'd love to see her reaction when she finds out. You did what? You told my mom about this? No! How could you? Of course I told your mom. I think she'd be the first person who'd want to know about this. I'm sure she wants to know that her daughter has grown up to be a lovely lady. I wonder how she felt when she found out that her daughter was trying to get married to a guy that was already married. You really are an awful woman, aren't you? You're ruining this for everyone involved. My mom's going to kill me for this. I'm ruined. My life is in ruins because of you. Perfect. Now we've managed to ruin each other's lives. It's only fair. Although I'm not even done yet. I'm going to make your life hell from now on. You already have made my life hell, and I despise you for it. Especially this tattoo. How the hell am I meant to get it off of me? I don't think there is anything I can do. You're just going to have to live with it. I think it suits you and your personality. Anyway, you have other things that you should be worrying about. I'm preparing for a divorce from Charles along with my lawyer. I am going to take Charles to court and get a lot of money out of him for this. It was his fault that our marriage broke down, so he's going to have to give me a big payout. I think your new husband is going to be facing some huge financial difficulties. I hope it doesn't affect you too much. Oh, I'm also going to be suing you as well. You slept with him knowing that I was married to him, and you even tricked me into becoming your friend. You completely manipulated me and ruined my life. I have all the evidence to back this up as well. Wait, hold on! You shouldn't do that to us. We need a lot of money for our wedding and honeymoon. It's not going to be possible if you sue us. Can't we find a way to work this out? We were friends. We were so close to each other. I don't think you need to do all this. You're really causing a lot of trouble for a lot of people. If you don't want to be with Charles anymore, then just leave quietly. You don't need to do all this. You want a divorce from him as well, right? Now you're going to pretend that we were friends? What a joke. You were cheating with my husband. The entire time I thought we were friends, you were betraying me. I never should have trusted you in the first place. You never should have done this. Women should look out for each other. I'm definitely not going to let this just slide. I'm going to make you guys both pay for this. I'm sorry. I really am. I was in a difficult situation and I didn't know what to do. Do you really have to take us to court over this? We need the money to hold my dream wedding. I'm one of the victims here, you know. Can't you show me at least a little sympathy? That's not what you should be worried about right now. In fact, I'm going to try to get as much money off you guys as possible so that you can't have your dream wedding. You're really not the victim in this, so I don't see why I should be sympathetic to you. I look forward to seeing you in court. I hope this causes a lot of pain for you and him. I'm going to really enjoy watching you both suffer. Cindy's parents were absolutely furious when they found out that their daughter was having an affair with a married man. I had a chat with her mom, and she told me that she absolutely hated people that cheat. Apparently, her previous husband had cheated on her, and she's been very resentful ever since. Cindy tried to talk her way out of it all, but I made sure that she couldn't be handing over screenshots of my text messages with her and Charles over the past few months. It became very clear to her parents that me and Charles were married, while Cindy had been planning out her marriage with him. I'm glad that her parents were morally correct people, and that they sided with me. I asked her parents to contact all of Cindy's friends about what she had done, so that they wouldn't attend her wedding. They also called up all their relatives to let them know what a traitor Cindy had grown up into. I also spread the news about what Charles had done to me to all his friends and family. 
I made sure to post the story online, alongside pictures of them as well, just so that everyone knew how much of a traitor Charles and Cindy were. I really wanted to make sure that I got to ruin their wedding. I couldn't bear to see them become happy together. The day of their wedding came, and nobody ended up showing up as me and Cindy's parents had managed to convince all the guests to not come. It became the most miserable day of her life instead of becoming the wedding she had dreamed of all her life. I heard that she cried for days and days, and she never fully recovered from it. She barely ever laughs or smiles anymore. It's a shame, because she used to have such a lovely smile. The funny thing is, they still had to pay the full amount for the wedding venue and all the catering services. They paid close to $50,000 for a completely empty wedding. I ended up taking them to court a couple of weeks after the wedding. I made sure to make sure their court date overlapped with their honeymoon, so that they would have to cancel that as well. I won the case by a landslide and managed to make them pay me a total of $80,000 between them. I decided to use this money to start my new life. Although Cindy and Charles were now married, they lost all their savings, family, and friends in the process. On top of that, they both had a digital tattoo, as the post I made about them having an affair went kind of viral. Oh, Cindy also had the physical tattoo as well. <laughs> now everyone knows what she is. After everything had settled down, Alex sent me a message asking if I was okay. I was really grateful for him, as I never would have found out about the affair without him warning me about it. I decided to ask him out for lunch to say thank you. For some reason, we really started to hit it off, and we ended up going on a couple of dates together after that. I'm currently going out with him, and I've never been happier. I thought my life was over when I found out that Charles was cheating on me. But I actually think I'm happier right now. I hope that me and Alex have a really happy future waiting for us. Hey, how you doing, buddy? I saw you ducking out of the party pretty early. You didn't even say thanks to your favorite brother-in-law. How could you, man? Anyway, so what did you think about that? It's a hell of a time, isn't it? Uh, what did you think of those ribs? Did you see all those guests sucking on those things like it was their last meal? Man, I'm telling you, I'm a man of the people. Take a look at all those guests that we had today. I don't think they had a good meal in years. Just look at their reactions. It's kind of sad if I'm being honest. I mean, the food was pretty good, but it's nothing special, really. That's what my family eats every weekend. We like to live big. Anyway, man, what the hell was that about? Why don't you come back here? It was way too early to leave the festivities. We haven't even bought out the piñata yet. You gotta watch the kids almost hit their parents trying to whack that thing. <laughs> Hey, Frank. Uh, look, that was an amazing time. Uh, thank you so much for putting everything together. It sounds like your little daughter is having a hell of a time there. I'm pretty sure it's a birthday that she'll never forget. Well, aren't you a little sweetheart, Simon? You just know how to flatter a girl, don't you? <laughs> anyway, if you're having that much of a good time, I don't see why you're skedaddling out of here. There are so many people I wanted to introduce you to here. Did you happen to speak to my buddy Paul? Man, that guy is an absolute kick in the head. That guy could fill out a whole library of stories. He's got some pretty weird experiences, man. You're missing out on a really fun time. I know, I know. Oh, what can I say? Duty calls. Come on, man. Don't be throwing that crap around. What duty do you have? You're a freelance photographer. I mean, you came to this party and you hung around for about an hour or two. I saw you talking to a couple of people, but I wouldn't say you were actually getting out there and enjoying everything that you can. Don't think all that I can offer is good ribs. There's a lot more entertainment on its way. Look, uh, you know what, Frank? Uh, thank you. I honestly appreciate it. It's clear that you really care about me and you want to be a good brother-in-law. If you didn't, you wouldn't be messaging me this much right now, would you? Well, you are family at the end of the day. Exactly, and I'm really appreciative for all the attention. But you know how my work is being a freelancer. You never know when work is just going to come or when it's going to disappear forever. Whatever little opportunity I've got, I've got to pounce on it. Just think about it. I'm marrying your sister soon, right? I've got to do whatever I can to support her. I want her to feel like we're not at risk at any point in time. You know what? You might have a point there. 
I do have to say, Simon, you can be a good old stick in the mud sometimes. I mean, this is a birthday party. If your dad eager to pull the trigger on your little camera, then how about you whip it out for the party and capture the amazing moments we have here? I'm sure that my little daughter would love to play model for a bit, especially after the cool presents I've got her. She is absolutely gonna love it. Speaking of which, you're gonna miss out on her reaction when I show her all of the presents. Do you really have to leave so early? I know, I'm leaving with a heavy heart. Don't think I take any pleasure in leaving that place. Anyway, I've got your little daughter a gift and I gave it to her personally. I told her to open it up when she's opening up everything else. I'm sure she's gonna absolutely love it. I know we're not gonna be there to support her, but at least she knows we're thinking about her. I've gotta say, Simon, you may be a good guy, but you're an absolute dullard. I mean, do you understand how kids work at all? I'm pretty sure she's cheering up right now on the inside. Oh, I don't know about that. She seemed pretty happy when we left. She got herself preoccupied with a bunch of other things. Yeah, of course she's gonna do that. No kid wants to talk about how they're really feeling. You know what? I kind of have a bone to pick with you now. Hey, come on, Frank. No need to get all negative. You're at a party after all. Yeah, well, to hell with that. Don't you tell me what to do. I think I need to get this one out there. I am not happy about you being a part of my family from this point on, Simon. Hey, Frank, uh, just take it easy. Make sure you haven't drunk too much. Who gives a damn about how much I drink? That's got nothing to do with you. Are you my mom watching me this whole time? Just mind your own goddamn business. I am a grown man. I can drink as much as I damn well please. Simon, if you just focused on having a good time here and talking with everyone, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Uh, something tells me that me leaving the party today isn't the only thing you're angry at me about. Uh, so what is it? What's been on your mind? From the very moment I met you, I had no idea what my sister saw in you. I mean, some geeky guy walking around with glasses that takes photos all the time? There's nothing interesting about you at all. That's not the type of guy someone like my sister should be walking around with. She deserves something better. A guy that looks like he showers, for one. Okay, uh, that's an interesting comment. This has something to do with me being a photographer, then, I'm guessing? Well, uh, that's one of the things. Well, what's so wrong with being a photographer? It's a very unique and difficult profession. Yeah, right. Don't talk to me about difficult. You walk around and you press a button. You can try and complicate it in as many ways as you want, but at the end of the day, that is all you do. Oh, come on now, Frank. You know, if that was all I had to do, then I wouldn't even have a job. People would be doing this type of thing themselves. Admit it, it's not that hard to do, is it? Don't tell me you actually are proud of what you do. <laughs> if I'm being honest, Frank, I am. It's not just about taking the photo. It's about telling a story. Every photographer has his own style and a way that he wants to take a photo. One photo can tell 1,000 different stories depending on how the person edits it. It's a really cool profession and I'd like to introduce it to you at some point. Wow. Simon, that sounds so fun. I couldn't think of anything else I'd rather do with my time than look at photos with you all day. You can show me those photos and I'll show you the crevice between my butt cheeks. I'm pretty sure both are going to be equally breathtaking. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. I'm not just sure if you're trying to put me down or trying to compliment yourself. Well, yeah, just shut up. I've got no interest in your stupid photos. Why don't you find an actual profession like a real man, huh? Why don't you do something that my sister can actually be proud of? Better yet, go to the gym and hide those scrawny bones of yours. You and I stand next to each other at the party, and you look like my teenage son. <laughs> Your sister is proud of what I do. It's the reason why she fell in love with me in the first place. She loves my work and supports me with it. Yeah, right. 
I'm not gonna believe that until I get a written statement showing that she actually loves you. Some goof with a beard walking around with a camera isn't exactly attractive, is it? The beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's exactly what some little dweeb like you would say. I mean, let's just talk about your income. Did you have a look at my little chateau today? What did you just call it? Do you even know what that means? Of course I know what it means. What, you don't think my house is worthy enough to be called something like that? Just admit it, you got lost trying to look for the toilet. I've had guests walking around looking for that thing for like 10 minutes. It's quite a large place, yes, I'll admit that much. Come on, you're totally doing me a disservice here. It's not just about the size, but look at what we've got in it. We've got sculptures that we've ordered from overseas. We've got paintings that are worth thousands and thousands of dollars. We've got a massive yard for the kids to play in and a pool for them to jump in after school. Heck, we even got a kitchen with our own cooks. You want some sirloin snakes with a snap of your fingers? Not to worry, we've got you covered. I mean, I'm telling you, in a place like my house, you don't even need to go outside. We've got everything that we would need within these walls. And you know what? I've given that all to my wife. She is an amazing person. And that's how far I was willing to work for her. Well, uh, despite the differences we have between us, Frank, I will say that's really admirable. Not many men will do that. See, that's where you're wrong, Simon. Only men will do this. Men that aren't doing this can't be called men. You should have gotten into a real profession just like me. It could have been anything. Do real estate just like I did. Or maybe banking. Just what person in their right mind would choose photography? You might as well be working at McDonald's. I'm pretty sure they have a higher base earning per annum than you do. Oh, enough of that. Frank, I think you've had enough of insulting what I do. You think I'm just gonna sit here and take it from you? I do, to be honest. Because a little wimp like you can't do anything against me. Like, what are you gonna do, big man? You're gonna come back to my chateau and challenge the king? You really wanna duke it out in front of my daughter? Of course I don't. I'll say whatever the hell I want to, and you're gonna listen. You're flaunting your success, and I don't care for it. It doesn't make you any better than me. I'm not scared of some bully. I'm gonna have a word with your sister. I'm not gonna put up with it. You need to realize that we're family, and that I deserve some basic respect. Oh no, not my sister. Whatever am I gonna do? If she ever hears about this, I'm gonna be hiding in my room for weeks. She's definitely gonna have it out for me. Maybe she'll go tell mom like she used to when we were kids. Oh man, I'm gonna be in so much trouble. Please, don't tell my sister. I'll do anything. Have my house, I'll give it to you. You can even have the car. Just don't tell my sister. You know, your idiocracy continues to amaze me, Frank. I've heard what you've had to say. I get it. I'm not going to force you to like photography, but you're at least going to respect that I do it. You can't actually expect that of me, can you? Let's face it, Simon. Down the track, this is going to come back to bite me. What do you mean it's going to come back to bite you? See, this is what I mean. If you actually trained your mind in a proper profession, you would learn how to see what's going to happen in the future. A little bit of foresight, if you will. Well, how about I break it down to you, young man? What do you mean, young man? I'm the same age as you. Biologically, maybe, but mentally, I think you need to be taught a lesson. Didn't anyone ever teach you proper manners? Don't you know not to interrupt the teacher as he's talking? You really have a high opinion of yourself, don't you? There is nothing about you that puts you above me, Frank. Well, listen here, little Simon. What's gonna happen is you're gonna continue on your profession in photography. Now, let's face it, that's a pretty competitive field. I mean, how many people do you need to press a button on the camera? You only need one, right? It's gonna reach a point where you're not gonna have any jobs coming in at all. Consequently, your finances are gonna suffer because of it. Then my sister is gonna cry and moan and complain that she doesn't have any money. You guys don't have enough to live on. Uh, what is she gonna do then, huh? 
Do you think she's just gonna rub her hands together, open them up, and expect the money that she needs to be there? Of course she's not. She is gonna turn to family. That is what family is there for, I guess. You have something against her relying on her own family? Yeah, but just think about this logically. We're not gonna burden our parents. They've worked hard their whole lives. We owe them too much already. We can't exactly take money from them. So who is she gonna turn to then? The only person that she's related to. Your friendly neighborhood Frank. Is that what you're starting to call yourself now, huh? There's really no limit to your vanity. It's better to be vain than to be poor. Plus, you should know already, I'm known around these parts. I'm a guy that can talk to people, and everyone comes around for a party at Frank's Chateau. So, you and my sister are gonna get yourselves into a little pickle, and you're gonna come to my doorstep begging me. You'll do anything for a little bit of a handout. And I have to be honest, I am not gonna be happy on that day. She should have known to get with a guy that has a decent level of competency. You're making a lot of assumptions here, Frank, and you're making a fatally incorrect one. You've got no idea if my photography is going to lift off or sink. You don't even know the intricate details of the type of work I do. You don't know the market and you don't know the demand. We're going to be fine financially no matter what prejudices you have. And if I'm being really honest right now, with the impression that you're giving me, I don't think I want to go to your doorstep and ask you for money. I would be really disgusted with myself if I was in the palm of your hand, putting up with that smug attitude of yours. I don't know what I would do, but I would find another way to avoid it. But let's face it, the situation is never going to happen. You really are a little weasel, you know that? I can't believe I actually invited you to this party. I swear there are just some times in my life that I'm way too nice. I really don't know what to do about you, Frank. I really don't know where these weird prejudices of yours have come from, but I think it's really sad. Think about it. We're family at the end of the day. This isn't something that we should really fight about. We should have some sort of mutual respect for each other. Up until today, I thought we had that. Well, I guess at some point we had to show each other our true colors, didn't we? I care about my sister, and I want her to be with a capable partner. Someone like her little brother. I'll tell you what, if you really want my respect, how about you do me a favor? Do a little bit of work and show me that you're a real man, and then I will start to respect you. Are you kidding me right now? Is this something that I have to earn? I'm your family now, Frank. Why can't you just respect me? What do you mean that you're my family? You and my sister aren't married yet. You never know what's going to happen up until that day. Hey, she might even leave you for all we know. Don't get your hopes up. You never know what will happen when a strong, burly banker catches her in his sights. Whatever, Frank. Talking to you right now is ridiculous. Well, you know what? Just hear me out. You might like my little proposition. Did you happen to take a look at my lawn while you were here? I sure did. Uh, that was quite impressive. The kids must enjoy playing in that extra large space. Of course they do. That's why I got this place. I want them to run around and tire themselves out as much as possible. Well, listen here. The grass is starting to get a little bit too long for my liking. How about you come over here and snip it for me? You want me to mow your lawn? Bingo! That seems really unfair. You want me to actually do labor for me to gain your respect? What are you going to do for me, Frank? Absolutely nothing. I don't need to prove anything to you. Are you kidding me right now? Where is this attitude coming from? You think just because you work in real estate that you're suddenly above me? Hey, look, the house speaks for itself, doesn't it? Look at the place that we live in. We are living big. Honestly, Simon, compared to us, you're just an ant that I could squash. You really need to learn your place. I mean, you couldn't even imagine yourself having a place like this. But think about it. A man as powerful and influential as I am is giving you a chance to gain my respect. That's worth a lot. You know, it's probably worth even more than the materialistic things that you own. Think of this as a nice opportunity for yourself. What a load of crap. 
I've never heard of such a stupid deal in my whole life. Well, if that's the case, why don't you think about my sister? Do you think she likes the fact that we're having this conversation? Someone in her position would want nothing more in the world than her family to just get along with each other. Think about it. She's got her little brother that she's taking care of her whole life, and now she's having her man have a conflict with him? Having two people that she cares about fighting isn't exactly ideal. If you want us to have a healthy relationship with each other, you're going to have to do what I say. Okay, I understand your logic. But at the same time, I had a good look at your lawn. It looked like the grass was freshly cut. What exactly do you want me to do? Hey, look, that's for you to figure out and for me to be the judge of. Do something to impress me and we'll start taking it from there. We can't do this any other way. Frank, do you want some free photos or something? I mean, when's the next birthday? I'll take photos of your wife or something. I'll do someone's marriage. I don't see the point of me coming over there and cutting the grass for you. Especially when there's nothing else to cut. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Is this what you people do in the photography industry? You don't have a can-do attitude, do you? Let me put it simply for you, Simon. Do you want my sister to be happy in your marriage? Of course I do. Well, we're gonna do what it takes to create healthy relations amongst your family, if that's the case. Now you know what? I've wasted my time talking with you enough as it is. I've got a party to get back to. I want to see you there that weekend. I am not going to take no for an answer. Hi, honey. I just got finished up in the office and I'm at the party right now. I have to say, it really sucks being called in on the weekend, especially for a time like this. Could you believe that trouble could start on the exact same day as the birthday party of my niece? This is an absolute nightmare. Well, at least I get to sit here and cool off for a bit. There's a couple of relatives I haven't seen in a really long time, and I've gotta say, Frank really did a good job at making this party spectacular. I mean, all of this for a little eight-year-old girl? Surely this is way too extravagant. I don't remember getting anything this exciting at her age. Hey, Catherine. It's good to know that I wasn't the only one thinking that. You could combine all the birthdays that I've had so far together, and it wouldn't reach the magnitude of that one. Hey, what are you talking about right now? I've had some amazing parties for you. How could you insult me that way? I put a lot of effort into those, you know? Oh, wait, uh, look, honey, you know that I, I didn't mean it that way. Come on, your parties were amazing. To be honest, all of the grandiosity and big displays of wealth are not really for me. A good party is about the little intricacies in it, the little details that you put into it. I think Frank is just blowing as much money as he can and just pretending people are having a good time. Looks like someone's feeling a little bit bitter. Come on, Simon. You have to admit that things are pretty amazing here. I mean, did you try the ribs? I didn't even know Frank could cook that well. He's my little brother and I've known him forever. He couldn't boil an egg if it meant his life was on the line. Yeah, yeah, Frank is so amazing, isn't he? Well, if you're having so much fun there, you can just stay there. I'm going home. You know what? I wanted to talk to you about that. What's going on right now? I thought you were going to be here. You only sent me a text a couple of hours ago saying that you were at this party. I was expecting to be with my husband right now. Except now I'm all alone. I know this is a kid's party, but check out the type of people here. Frank has brought a lot of business associates here. Are you worried that someone is going to talk to me? One of those boys in the snazzy suits might snatch me up. Should I be worried about something like that? Catherine, you and I are about to get married, aren't we? Of course we are. Honey, I'm just being a little bit playful with you. Don't get so serious all the time. You're the only guy I care about. <laughs> I have to be honest right now. I'm not really in the mood for jokes. That's the reason why I left that party. All right, come on, Simon. What's going on? Talk to me. I'm about to be your wife soon. We've got to be open and honest with each other. 
I can tell you what's on my mind, but you're not gonna like what you're gonna hear. It's fine, just let me keep silent. I'll sort myself out. Well, I'm not going to do that because obviously something happened at this party. What's going on? Did you guys have a fight? Yeah, something like that. Your brother and I are two very different people. We're not the type of people to see eye to eye. Oh no. I guess things blew up between you two, huh? It sounds like you knew something like this would happen. A little part of me did. I know you very well, and I know my brother very well. Putting you two together is like putting Mentos in a bottle of Coke. You don't want anyone to be around when something like that happens. Yeah, well, thankfully, whatever differences we had were sorted out through WhatsApp. If we actually started something at the party, things would have been a different story. We would have been walking into a massacre. Are you kidding me right now? Is that how much you two argued? Just what sparked this in the first place? Well, uh, look, I've got a message from my client saying that he's going to pay extra if I can give him the photos tonight. We did a photo shoot for his Tinder profile, and I guess he can't wait a couple of weeks for me to get it done. He wants to put himself out there straight away. I don't really have an issue with it, to be honest. I kind of wanted to go home. Frank's party wasn't really that enjoyable for me. I'll be honest, the food was quite delicious, but the type of people he has in his company are really repulsive. Oh boy, you're telling me. I've had to put up with those guys for a long time. They're a bunch of meatheads just like my brother. You know when people are so horrid that it actually makes your stomach churn? I mean, those guys were bragging about the businesses they have and how much they were ripping off their customers. They found out little ways that they could scam them. I honestly couldn't sit there any longer. Not to mention his kids. I know he's their father and he's gonna love them to bits, but they're a bunch of monkeys. For some reason, they thought it was funny to come over to me and splash water in my face. They had those little water pistol guns and they just couldn't keep the fun and excitement to themselves. Oh, wow. I can see that annoying you. Don't take it too seriously, though. They're kids at the end of the day. I'm pretty sure you did something like that as well when you were young, Simon. I don't know. You know what type of father I have, right? He really did a good job of teaching me not to step on other people's shoes. Anyway, I wasn't having a good time there. I was kind of hoping you would come so I could actually have someone to talk to. That was when I got the message that I could start work tonight and it was a good excuse to leave. I was going to say goodbye to your brother, but people were telling me that he was in the toilet. I told them to give him my thanks for the party and that I was leaving. Apparently, he saw me walking out the door and he didn't really like that. Okay. So, what happened after that? Did he chase after you or something? No, uh, we started talking on WhatsApp and that's when the argument started. Yeah, I can't imagine that going well. My brother is a really prickly guy. He's got a very high opinion of himself. You don't need to tell me that. I've experienced it firsthand. Okay, well, you know what he's like, don't you? I'm pretty sure he took some offense to you leaving the party that early. Especially the fact that you didn't say goodbye to him directly. Well, I gotta be honest. I did try to go to his toilet and say goodbye, but I couldn't get anywhere near it. The stench that was coming from there was overwhelming. I know he was talking up those ribs today, but I didn't think it was good for his stomach. No, no, that's got nothing to do with the ribs. He's always been like that. I know exactly what that smell is. He really has to get that checked out by a doctor at some point. So anyway, what did you guys argue about? Well, basically, he just wanted to flaunt his success and tell me that I'm not doing a good enough job of making you happy. What is that supposed to mean? Well, he thinks I should be giving you a nice big house like his one, or a chateau, as he likes to call it. Oh my god, my brother! He's such a pretentious douchebag! I swear he never grows up. He's still a 15-year-old boy. The only difference now is he's got a lot of figures in his bank account that just exaggerates his personality even more. Anyway, I don't want you to care about anything he says. 
Him having a massive house and whatever is irrelevant to the type of life I want to have with you. Don't worry about it. Are you sure you're going to be okay with that? Your brother and I aren't getting along. Uh, he's your family at the end of the day. Aren't you a little bit upset about this? Don't worry. I'll go and have a talk to him. I'll tell him straight. Thank you for telling me this. No, Catherine, you can't do that. Why not? I don't think it's going to work. He seems to be mocking you. He doesn't think you can do anything. And if you think about it, it's a little bit weird, isn't it? In what way? Well, you guys aren't kids anymore. You're adults now. We should handle this as if it's an adult problem. Okay. Well, how exactly do you want to handle this? Well, the thing is, he brought up a deal with me that he would start to respect me if I went to his house and did some chores for him. What are you, his slave or something? That's not exactly fixing the issue, is it? What's going through your head, Simon? You didn't actually agree, did you? Well, at the moment, it's up in smoke. I haven't given him a clear answer, but if it means peace between us, I don't see the issue with it. At the end of the day, I'm just going to go based on your wishes. If you really want me to go over there and submit myself to his will, I'll do what he says. It all depends on how much you value the relationship between me and your brother. This is just ridiculous! My brother is just on a power trip, you know that, right? He's a bully! He just wants to show he's better than other people. And now that you're going over there to be a slave, it's going to be that much more obvious. You may as well get on all fours to be a footrest for him. Just what exactly are you going to do anyway? Wash his dishes for him or something? Nothing like that, but he does want me to mow his lawn. Are you kidding me right now? Do you see the size of that thing? He didn't actually ask you that, did he? He sure did. Simon, you complete buffoon! I can't believe you accepted that! Hey, didn't you listen to me before? I told you that I left it up in smoke. I'm not actually gonna do it. I can't believe he would actually ask you to do that. How degrading is that? It's not like you're some 15-year-old boy that needs a couple more dollars to buy more lunch at school. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. I don't care if we're out of the party. He needs to hear this. No one insults my husband like this. You really are a piece of work, aren't you? I mean, yesterday I was only joking about you telling my sister on me, but you actually went off and you told her, didn't you? If you had an issue with me, Simon, how come you didn't come back here and tell me yourself? Is that the type of guy you're going to be from this point on? Anytime push comes to shove, you're just going to palm it off onto my sister, are you? This just further proves why you're not suitable to marry her. I can't believe such a squid is going to be in my family soon. Frank, I didn't order her to do anything. She acted out of her own will. Uh, look, I tried to stop her, but whatever she did, she did. So, uh, what happened between you guys? Well, what was originally meant to be the most awesome, amazing birthday party ever turned into an absolute mess. I had to tell everyone to go home after that. I've got to tell you, seeing as you're getting married to my sister, you have to be prepared for that little temper of hers. I mean, one little flick of the switch and she flares out. What do you mean? Uh, what exactly happened? Well, we had a nice, cool DJ stereo kit here, and there were guys playing the music. They were doing an amazing job. These are a couple of my buddies from high school. They managed to hit it big. Their stuff rocks. I shouldn't be too surprised, though. Anyone that is graced with the privilege of being in my presence usually turns into something. You know what? The next time I see your parents, I need to have a long discussion with them. It's really amazing how you've become this arrogant, even as an adult. I want to know how they raised you as a child. You really want to know? You don't even need to speak to them. I'll tell you myself. They raised me to be a champion. They raised you to be detestable. It seems the type of people that say that tend to be the losers. It's fine, I get it, Simon. I opened your eyes today. 
you realized how pathetic you are. You saw how amazing my house is and how glorious life could be. You knew you would never achieve something like that with your own photography. You must be seething with frustration. Every time you think of your brother-in-law, you have clenched fists. Frank, I have had enough of your boasting. You've already given me enough of it today. What happened between you and my wife? I need to know. She hasn't talked to me all night. Hey, buddy. Stop acting like you crossed over the finish line. You guys aren't married yet. Frank, tell me. Fine. Look, she's an absolute psycho. She hasn't changed ever since she was a kid. I was over with my buddies at the DJ set doing some stuff with them, and she asked me what I demanded you to do this weekend. I told her that we had an arrangement for you to mow the lawn. The moment she heard that, she took one of the speakers and pushed it over, smashing it into the TV. Are you sure you want to marry someone like this? That was absolutely insane. She broke my stuff, man. I thought people get wiser as they grow older. She's turned into more of an ape. I can't believe it. Uh, look, uh, I'll have a word with her tonight. She went way too far doing that. Hey, look, don't worry about it. I'm not like you, Simon. This isn't even going to put a dent into our financials. We're fine. I'm more worried about you. I don't think you can handle a woman like that. She's going to eat you up. A guy with no balls isn't going to cope with the cannons my sister has down there. <laughs> you better get out of this marriage as soon as you can. Yeah, well, Frank, you can just suck it up. This is the person that I've chosen to be with, and I don't care if she's done that today. I'm really sorry that she did something like that. Regardless of whether or not you want me to pay for it, I'm going to give you some money. I can't give you anything at the moment because I don't have many jobs. It's not a good season for photography. But give it a couple of months and I will be able to pay you back. You know what? Don't even bother. You really are a spineless little creature, aren't you? Even after hearing this about her, you still want to marry her? You've got to toughen up. You don't know what our families are like. We're warriors. We don't take crap from anyone. We eat up little mice photographers like you for breakfast. Well, clearly that's not the case because she decided to marry me. I don't care what you think about it, Frank. We're going to be family soon and you are going to have to accept that. Yeah, well, we might be family, but that doesn't mean that I have to go to your wedding. Don't expect me to be there. Are you kidding me right now? Frank, this is your sister we're talking about. It is a special day for her. You have to be there. Uh, you're her brother. I don't have to do Jack. I don't want to support what is going on. I am definitely not going to be there enjoying myself. I am not going to put on a fake smile for everyone. If you wanted me at that wedding, too bad. Well, you know what, Frank? If that's the way that it's going to be, then I can't argue with you. I guess we'll have to have this wedding without you. Are you serious? Are you going to back off that easily? I know when a person is set in their ways. I'm not going to sit here and try and change your mind. I'll try and talk to Catherine about it. Let her down easily. You just continue to prove my point. You have got no spine at all. Good luck. Try and have a decent wedding in that crappy little venue you have. You know what I'm going to do that day, huh? I'm going to get my family and take them out on the yacht. We're going to have a little bit of a boat party. Have that in the back of your mind as you sign your little life away to my sister. Simon, Simon, get your butt out here already. This is an emergency. You need to get me into this wedding. Is that you, Frank? You were the last person I was expecting to get a message from today. Uh, what do you want? I thought you were on your yacht celebrating my misery. I'm trying to get ready for things here. We're about to have the ceremony soon. I know you are. You think I haven't seen the itinerary for today? Look, I don't have time to explain, but I need you to get me to that wedding. Something big has just happened. Well, this is an interesting change of heart. Did you take the time to think about what's going to happen from this point on and accept the fact that I'm going to be part of this family? I have to say, it took you a long time, Frank. Of course I haven't. 
I still feel the same way about you that I always have. But here's the thing. I've got a big problem, and you've got to let me into that wedding. My job is on the line here. Uh, what do you mean your job is on the line? Well, uh, look, you're going to be really surprised to hear this, but you and I actually have a connection. You heard me talk about being a real estate agent that whole time. Didn't you think to tell me what your father was into? All right, so I'm guessing Catherine must have told you about my father then. Yeah, he's working in real estate as well. He has his own branch. He's been in that industry ever since I was a kid. Yeah, well, that branch that he's owning is the place where I'm working. That guy's my boss, man. Are you serious right now? My dad is the one that's employing you? <laughs> well, this is some poetic justice, isn't it? Yeah, look, this isn't the time to be making jokes at me. We have to act and we have to act fast. Here's the thing about your dad. I'm pretty sure you know it yourself, but he's an absolute tight ass. I have got no idea how you grew up underneath that guy. He's super strict to everyone at work. He's got us all on a leash. My dad has often talked about the people that he employs. He's very strict with them and he expects the best results. But for the people in his family, he treats us with a gentle hand. I mean, he's even let me do the job that I'm currently doing now. It's got nothing to do with real estate. You know what? That doesn't make any sense to me, to be honest. If you had a dad that's doing something that amazing, just why in the hell did you become a photographer? Well, that was my passion. That's what I wanted to do with my life. But don't you think it would have been smarter to become a real estate agent? Your dad could have taught you everything. I mean, I've been working in this thing for about eight years now, and I still don't know everything that I could. You could have got a whole life of education in this industry. That's not to try say that my dad didn't try. He had me at the books and he was teaching me all about houses and how the market is working. It just didn't really click with me. My dad wasn't too pushy about it though. He wasn't super insistent on me becoming a real estate agent if I didn't want to be one. We had a long discussion about what my dream was and what I wanted to do. I told him that I loved photos. I loved seeing magazines and the people in them. I thought one day I could take the same type of photos. My name could be in that magazine too. From that point on, he decided to support my dream. Why would he do something like that? This is what I mean, he sounds like a horrible father. If he really cared about your future and putting you on the right path, he would have made you one hell of a real estate agent. That is not his dream though. To be honest, my dad doesn't even really care about being in the real estate industry. He only saw that as a means to fund my dream. What do you mean by that? Well, his dream was to have a child and for them to fulfill their dream. He realized there wasn't a good chance of him going anywhere. He was too old to pursue something he wanted to do. It was better to invest in his child's dream. So he decided to choose an occupation that had a high income. He got into housing, and he's been doing it ever since. This is all too much to take in. I can't believe that you were the son of a guy like that. I mean, I gotta be honest. He's pretty much got a stick up his behind 24-7. That being said, he is an admirable guy. He's kind of what I aim to be. He's successful and confident. He doesn't let anyone mess around with him. I just can't imagine a guy like you being bred from him. It's like seeing a bear give birth and a fish comes out instead. It is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, well, you don't have to believe it, but it's the truth. How did you find out anyway? Well, uh, that's what I need to talk to you about. This week he was telling me how he's gonna go to his son's wedding. He was saying that he really is proud of his son, but he was having some issues with the brother of the bride. Well, we all know who that is. I sympathized with him and said that people don't know common sense these days. You can't disrespect the guy that's going to marry your sister. I asked him for the name of the bride and he said my sister's last name. A little light bulb flipped in his head because he realized it was me. He looked at me with these stone cold eyes and connected the dots very easily. He told me to get out of his office and not to come back there for a whole week. Oh, he is so mad at me. I've never seen him like this before. What an interesting set of circumstances. To think that you actually worked for my dad. That can't work out very well for you. Yeah, well, look, that's putting it very lightly. 
Who knows what's gonna happen from this point on? I'm probably gonna lose my job over something like this. You gotta let me in there. You gotta let me apologize to him. And why do you think coming in here is gonna do you any good? You're probably gonna start fighting with everyone. You're the last face he wants to see on a day like this. Well, I mean, come on. You can be a good sport, can't you, Simon? I know we've had our differences and whatnot, but put it aside for our family. Don't you realize what's at risk here? Think about it. This job is all I have. I'm gonna lose everything. The house, the car, everything I've built up, even the security that I provided my family with. All of it is gone in an instant. All because you're gonna be selfish. You're not going to be cruel to me, are you? All we've got to do is act, chummy. He's got to see us getting along with each other at the moment. If he sees that, he'll know that I've given him the proper respect that he deserves. I am not doing that, Frank. We had a deal that you wouldn't be coming today, and here you are. I really don't want to be disturbed. I kind of like knowing that you weren't coming here. I've always found you to be repulsive. There's nothing that we have in common. We never get along. I don't care what happens to you from this point on. Whatever my dad decides to do is up to him. I am indifferent to it. Anyway, I have a wedding to get back to. Don't bother me again. Come on, Simon. Are you serious right now? Aren't you the one telling me that we should start getting along? Well, this is our chance, isn't it? Hey, how about this? I'll forget about the lawn thing. You don't have to come over and mow for me. I'll give you the respect you need. You just gotta put in a good word with your dad for me. Come on, please. I don't want to lose my job. Look at you being all smug and whatnot. I saw those photos you had from the wedding. I hope you're happy. Well, thanks, Frank. That's very kind coming from you. We had an amazing day. I'm sorry that you weren't able to attend. Did you see your sister? Yeah, I saw her. I saw that stupid big face of hers. So, you two finally got married. You guys look so proud of yourselves. Well, we are, to be honest. She and I have gone through a lot. We've been in a very long relationship and it's finally come to some fruition. Who would have thought that we would get married? Well, isn't that perfect? Everything works out for Simon and my sister. You guys get to live happily ever after. And what about me? Did anyone care to think what would happen to me? No one did, did they? I mean, I didn't just have my stuff trashed at my house. I didn't just lose my job or anything. Did you guys care about anyone else apart from yourselves? What did you say right now, Frank? Yeah, you heard me. Your anal dad actually fired me. Can you believe that? I didn't even do anything wrong with work. There's no real reason to fire me. Actually, I might be able to give you a bit of insight on that one, Frank. Wait, uh, wh what's that supposed to mean? You actually know what happened? I do. I am still really close with my dad. I like to keep him updated on my career and what is going on. He also likes to tell me about his real estate business. I've actually known about his workers, even if I didn't know the name. There was always this one guy that he would bring up. This person, in particular, was one of his best. He brought in the most clients and he sold the most houses. He had an amazing way of keeping a rapport with people and he was able to sell them quite easily. Although, there's only one little caveat to this. Uh, what would that be? This guy was a fraud. He would oversell the houses and in most circumstances, there was a lot of problems with them. Some of them still had termites. Some of the houses were located in neighborhoods where the neighbors were hard to deal with. They would stay up all night partying or shouting, screaming at each other. This particular worker would have a way of selling the house like it was the best place you could live in. It was their dream home. He was able to get everyone hooked on it. Well, I kind of like the cut of this person's jib. Sounds like my type of guy. He also said that this person was incredibly arrogant. He thought he was the best person in that workplace. Whenever there was someone new on the team, he would bully them out, make them feel incompetent and worthless. While this person was really good at selling houses, he wasn't good at creating a healthy workplace for people. He was the type of person that my dad couldn't keep for a long time. 
Can you take a guess who that person might be? Are you kidding me right now? You're actually trying to say that it was me, aren't you? I don't get what his problem is. Our job is to sell houses, right? That's what I've done. He wants to do these things perfectly. Lying to people is not the way to do it. It doesn't matter how much money you rake in. I don't believe what I'm hearing right now. Well, fine, I've lost my job and I've got to find a different solution. You've got to help me out. Uh, you've got to help me find a job somewhere. What do you mean, me? I'm just some stupid photographer, right? I know, but maybe you could give me a job just in the meantime, you know? I've got rent and mortgages to pay. Uh, come on, just get me something to do. I can be your assistant or something. That is not gonna happen. I don't need an assistant. I've already got plenty of them. Well, that's a very interesting joke. I can't imagine you having any assistants. You're actually telling me that someone is there to hold the camera for you as you press the button? You really are incapable, aren't you? Look, you've got to think about this one logically, Simon. Okay, fair enough. You're a photographer, but maybe my savvy knowledge might be able to help you. I've got good people skills, you know? I'm sure that's an invaluable skill in photography. You might be skilled in your craft, but you need to know how to talk to people if you really want to get up there in the big leagues. Come on, buddy. I'm a very valuable asset. All you have to do is just let me have a chance. Yeah, I'm going to have to pass on that one. Look, I know what is going on right now. You don't actually want to get a job doing photography. You just want your old job back. My dad runs a very successful firm, and there are many good perks. You figured that if you help me out a little bit, I might begin to like you a bit more. Consequently, we'll be able to put in a good word with my dad. Tell him that you're worthy of getting your job back. Come on, that's not true. Don't think so badly about me. I'm just family. I'm family and I'm in a pinch at the moment. I'm relying on the people that I can. Even if I wanted to help you, I'm not living in this country anymore. Wait, what did you say? What is that supposed to mean? Well, you were talking about getting into the big magazines and whatnot. And let me tell you something, my hard work has finally paid off. What did you say? Look, I was being quite humble about it, but the thing is, I've already been working with some major brands recently. You wouldn't have heard of Burberry by any chance, have you? No way! You're not actually doing photography for them, are you? Oh, so you're doubting me. Of course I am! My wife is looking at their clothes all the time. You're actually taking photos for them? That is amazing! I sure am, uh, but here's the thing. I'm not doing it here in America. They want me to go out to Europe. They're going to pay for everything. Accommodation, places to stay, food for the month. Well, this is amazing. It's like a little quick holiday for you, isn't it? How long are you going to be out there? Well, from the looks of things, indefinitely. They're saying that America just doesn't offer the type of scene that fits their look. They want photos with a little bit more personality and edge. With someone of my caliber, it's not a bad idea to have me. They want to make use of me as much as possible. No way, you have got to be kidding me right now. You're actually leaving the country? I sure am, and this is a top dollar project. They're paying me very handsomely for this. Are you serious right now? How much? Well, uh, let's just say, give it a couple more years and I can probably buy that house off you if I really wanted to. Are you kidding me? For a job doing photography? This doesn't make any sense at all. You guys shouldn't earn that much money. Just how hard is it to do that? Well, I'm not really sure, to be honest, Frank. It comes very naturally to me. I'd say it's as hard as it is for you to lie to people about homes you get them to buy. So that being said, probably very easy. Well, <laughs> very funny. Simon, you gotta help me out if that's the case. What do you mean? Me help you out? Well, it's clear that you're earning a lot of money at the moment. Everything I bought here hasn't been paid for yet. They're all on loan. Uh, the, the, the car, uh, the house, everything. I'm planning for the future. I didn't expect to lose my job at a time like this. If things keep going this way, I'm going to be bankrupt. Well, this is pretty interesting, isn't it? 
Is it? Yeah, well, I mean, think about it. You're the one that was trying to put me down for being the poor guy. The guy that doesn't earn money. The guy that can't protect and provide for his family. It seems like you haven't been doing that either. Come on, who could have seen this happening? I didn't know that I was working for your dad. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that you looked at me and you made a judgment. You thought that just because I looked a little bit quirky and I wore glasses, that I wasn't doing anything with my life. I was some fake artist or something. Well, the truth is, I put a lot of love and dedication into my photography. It takes time to get good at this skill. It takes time to find a way of taking photos that people enjoy. I had a dream to become successful, to become the best at it. And I'm slowly edging my way there. Now look at me. I'm going to be putting Catherine out of work soon. She doesn't have to do anything. Her new lifestyle is going to consist of relaxing in Europe and going to places where she's never been before. That's going to be much better than your family being left out for the street. You know what's going to happen to us if we don't pay rent, don't you? Come on, Simon. You're married. Uh, you're family. Now you're meant to help family. This is my time of need. Uh, trust me, if you're in my position, I'd do anything to help you. What a load of crap. We know that's not true, Frank. You're just a selfish guy with a massive ego. The only reason that you're being nice to me now is because the tables have turned. You should have been nice to me regardless of whether or not my dad was employing you. It's just common courtesy to be nice to people. Instead, you wanted to act superior to me. Come on, buddy, don't do that. We can work out a deal, I'm sure we can. Uh, what do you want? How about this? You help me get back into real estate, and I'll get your house. You want to go to Europe, right? I'll make it so that you can go there ten times a year. No, I can't do that. Goodbye, Frank. This is the last time I will be speaking to you. Oh, wait a minute, S -S Simon, don't go just yet. I'm sorry, photography is cool. You have got an amazing profession. I really respect it now. Simon, you're not actually leaving me, are you? Simon? Simon! Frank did his best to contact me after that, but to no avail. He tried to get through to Catherine, but I explained to her what happened. She had a lifetime of listening to her brother's arrogant nature. She's finally had enough of it. She figured that with us going to Europe, it was a good time to cut ties with him. She understood his situation and what was going to happen to him, but she knew what he had done to get there. The fact that he lied to common people so that he could get ahead disgusted her. She didn't want anything to do with a guy like that. Over time, things didn't work out for him. His friends knew about his situation and the fact that he was unemployed. They also knew that everything he paid for was on loan. He didn't actually pay for it in full. He was on a slow sink to the bottom. His wife realized it too. She wasn't the best of characters and was only in it because he was powerful and had money. Now she knew he was going to be another slob like everyone else. The moment she realized that, she up and left one morning and never returned. She's quite an exotic woman from South America and there are rumors that she's gone back there. The chances that Frank is ever going to see his children again are quite slim. Frank's biggest downfall was his family. His whole life, he thought he could be a step above everyone else and use them. It was about time that he had a taste of his own treatment. Even if Frank managed to keep his job, things would have come back to bite him eventually. His reputation grew around town as the guy who lied about the places he sold. No one was ever going to give him a decent job. Not one restaurant and not one retail facility wanted him. And of course, the real estate industry wouldn't even accept his resume. The moment they saw his name, it went straight to the bin. The job he ended up getting was working as a janitor. His daily schedule consists of mopping up floors and cleaning toilets. Knowing that he's a janitor, people found out the exact places he was working. When they know his schedule, they go into the toilet in advance and leave him a special surprise in there. Sometimes there is even graffiti threatening him to never come back there again. He's not taking it too well, but hopefully in time, there is going to be some sort of therapy session for him. He might gain some sort of proper understanding of where he sits in society and that he should treat people a lot better. 
On the bright side of things, I'm starting to open my own brand here in Europe. I've had many clients for my photos and people really like my work. Catherine quit her job in America and she's been helping me a lot with my photography. She decided to create her own brand and we've been promoting it together. We've been having a great time here in Europe, but we plan to expand somewhere else. It's only a matter of time before my face is on a magazine and a guy like Frank will be reading it one day. I hope he remembers the days when he said I was never going to amount to anything and that I was just a stupid photographer. John, I just wanted to say thank you again for inviting us out to such a lovely place. It was a fantastic evening. The food was amazing, of course, but the news that we found out was by far the best part. I'm so happy that you and Sophie are finally getting married. There couldn't have been anything better for me to hear tonight. I'm so happy for her as her mother. I just know that the two of you will be happy together. Don't mention it, Fiona. I'm glad that you enjoyed your night. It was the least that I could do for you. You were so excited to break the news. We wanted to tell you somewhere nice, though. Not just over the phone, and I wanted to treat you and Steve to something as well. It was so nice to find out about it in person. I would have been happy either way, but it's just not the same over the phone. And that restaurant really was something. Did you see the size of the lobster that they brought out for us? I couldn't believe my eyes. I don't think I have ever seen one so big before. We thought the same thing about the phone. We also wanted to be able to see your faces when you heard the news. <laughs> And it really was a big one, wasn't it? I wonder where they pulled that thing from. It sure was. By the way, I think that you might have mentioned this, but when are you planning on having the wedding? I'm sorry, but I was just so excited when you two told me that you were engaged that I couldn't think straight. My head was spinning. You probably did say something, but it just went in one ear and out the other for me. And I don't expect Steve to remember either. He never listens. <laughs> That's fine. We don't have a set date just yet, but we're hoping to have it before the end of the year. That would be ideal in any case, but we will see what happens. I know that some couples end up being engaged for a long time before they finally have a wedding, but I don't want Sophie and I to be stuck in limbo like that. It sort of defeats the purpose in my eyes. It just doesn't feel quite finished until the wedding is over. But it really depends on what the availability is for venues and other wedding services. We will of course tell you as soon as we figure it out. Even before we send out the invites, of course, of course. There must be so much to think about for you now. Are you two going to plan it on your own or hire a wedding planner? They must cost so much these days. It was much simpler back when I got married. Or maybe that's just an old woman talking. Come on now, don't call yourself an old woman. That's not true at all. I'm sure that we will hire a planner for all of the details and decorations and all of that, but we will try to take care of all the big things ourselves. I'll talk to Sophie and see how much she wants to do herself. We only talked about it briefly, but now comes the time to really get into it. It will be nice to be able to have more control over the wedding, I think. But maybe I don't fully grasp what goes into planning one. It is your big day, after all. You want it to be just as you imagine it. Yeah, and we don't want to be so stressed out about it all that we can't even enjoy our night. I want it to be easy and a night to remember fondly for the rest of our lives. Well, as easy as it can be. I don't know if there's such a thing as an easy wedding. Not from what I have heard, at least. That sounds like a great idea. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you thank you and congratulations again. I can't wait until you become my son-in-law officially. Steve and I will invite you around to our place sometime soon as well. Nothing fancy like tonight, I'm afraid, but I hope you can join us anyway. Of course, we will always be available. Thanks for that, Fiona. John, sorry to bother you right now, but is there any chance that you are free? Something kind of important just came up. It's kind of urgent as well. Give me a text back once you have a chance. Hey, Soph. Sorry, I just got out of a meeting with a client so I couldn't answer the phone before, but I can talk now. What's going on? What's so important? You usually don't call me like that. Not when you know that I am at work. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. But this is an exception. I hope your phone was on silent so it didn't disturb the meeting at least. It's fine. The meeting was online so no one heard anything. Don't worry about it. So, what's going on? What's this urgent matter? 
You know how we booked an appointment to check out that wedding hall downtown? The really big one? Yeah, I remember that. But that's not supposed to be for another few weeks, is it? Don't tell me that I messed up the date. I was sure I wrote down the correct day in my calendar. No, no, you didn't mess the days up. It was supposed to be for a few weeks out. But they called me a little while before and said that someone else who was scheduled canceled on them so they have a free slot and we could come and check it out earlier than planned. I told them that I would have to check with you first since you're at work, but I think this is a good opportunity for us. The sooner we know the location of the wedding, the sooner we can tell our planner to organize everything else. This could really reduce some stress surrounding the event. So, any chance that you could make it today? Do you have any more meetings that you need to be there for? Wow, really? That's actually really good news. And what's more, I think I can actually make it now as well. Give me one second to check my schedule, but it should be all good. Yeah, all clear for the rest of the day. Well, I moved something out of the way that wasn't too important. Not as important as this. <laughs> I guess that's just one of the perks of being your own boss. You're the one who decides what's important and what isn't. That's why I had a feeling that you would be able to make it today, even on short notice. That's right. Not gonna lie, it's a pretty damn good perk. Although it's still not something I should do too often. So, where are you now, though? Should I just meet you there, or what? I'm just about to leave the house so I can come pick you up in the car. You're just at the office, right? I sure am. As I always am. Then meet me outside in, say, 20 minutes? I think I will be there in about that time. That way I won't have to look for parking either. Can you do that? No problem. But come around the back. There's not much traffic there and it will be easier than the front. Okay, no problem. I'll do that. I'll also call the venue back and tell them that we'll be there too. See you in 20! So, how is everything looking? What do you think of the venue? I love it! The size seems perfect for me and I can just imagine the day unfolding around me here. I can already see all the guests right in front of my eyes. I think it's perfect. And now I can't even imagine there being anything better than this for our special day. And what about your fiancé? What does he think of it? He seemed to be looking around a lot. Well, I'm going to guess that he's unsure about the size. He says that it might be a little big, but that's just because he doesn't usually like to make too big of a fuss about things. I'm sure he will come around to the idea soon. Give me a second to go and talk to him while he is walking around. Then we will get back to you. Of course. Take your time. There's no need to rush into any decisions. We can always make the booking later. But the quicker the better so that no one else steals the spot. Hey, honey. I was just talking to Janice over there. She's in charge of reservations. I think the place is perfect for us. What do you say? Should we book it? I don't know, Sophie. It's really nice, but it's awfully big. What are we going to do with the space so huge? We'll fill it up with people, of course. What else would we do? Imagine all the guests that could fit in here. But then we also have to think about decorating the entire place as well. It's not just about the number of people. We don't want the space to feel empty. Yeah, of course we will do that. But it's not like we're the ones who have to actually think about it. Isn't that why we hired a wedding planner? She can show us what she thinks will work well, and we just have to choose which one we think is the best. I guess you're right, but I'm still not fully sure about it. You know that I don't like to have massive events. I get a bit awkward around a lot of people. I know that it's a special day, but I didn't really think we were going to have a wedding this big. Listen, honey, this place is just perfect, I'm telling you. And you can leave all the guests to me as well. You know how much I love talking to everyone. I can just imagine the whole day already. It simply has to be held here. It has to be. Even look at just those windows over there. See them? Yeah. What about them? They're just windows, aren't they? I don't see anything that special about them. Yeah, they are, but look at how the light is coming in through there. All natural light. Imagine a photographer here and here. And now imagine the photos that will come out. It's going to be great. The photos are almost as important as the day itself. That way we can remember it well as the years go by. And if you're worried about it being too big for the number of people, don't be worried. I invited quite a few people from work as well, and they will be coming with our partners. In fact, with the number of people we have invited, I think this is the only spot we can really do it in and have them all come. <laughs> okay, okay. You want me over already. 
Maybe they should consider hiring you to work as a sales rep here. You would be great at convincing people to go through with the bookings. Their business would be booming with you here. Did you forget that that's what I do for a living? But this is actually what I think. It's not just a sales pitch to convince you. Eh, maybe a little. We can look at some other locations if you're really not sure. I did have some others that I booked in for, but I don't think there will be anything better than this. The main thing I'm worried about is the price tag that's going to come with this. I mean, we do have the money and everything. That's not the issue. But it is still quite a lot. I didn't really think that we were going to be putting on such an extravagant wedding. But if we rent this place, then take decorations, the catering for everyone who will fit in here, and everything else into consideration, it's going to cost us a pretty penny. Who cares about that? Sure, it's going to cost a lot, but I mean, it's not like we're going to struggle to come up with the money or anything. And this is our one chance to. We're only going to get married once in our lives, never again. And this should be the greatest day ever. I want to be able to remember it as being a huge hit with everyone I wanted there to celebrate with me. Don't you want that too? To be able to look back and know that we made it the best day it could possibly be? Of course I want that. You know what? You're right. I should stop worrying about the price so much. Okay, you have won me over. Let's do the wedding here. Great! I knew that you would understand me. Let's go talk to Janice then and seal the deal before someone else takes it. So, how did you find everything? Sophie here was telling me before that she couldn't imagine having the wedding anywhere else. She thinks it will be perfect for your special day. Did you reach a decision? You could always hold off, no need to make it now, but there's always a chance that someone else might jump in instead. Oh, there's no need to hold off on it. She convinced me quite quickly. She always has had a way with words. We decided that we want to lock the place in. This will be great for our wedding. That's great to hear. Let's go over to the table here, then. Wait a moment for me to get the papers together, and then we can get the reservation finalized. Great. Let me fill that in for you. I think it's best that I put my number down. John has been so busy with work recently, his phone is basically always ringing or getting messages. You will have more luck calling me if anything comes up. He would probably be in some meeting and won't be able to pick up the phone. That's a good idea. I moved my other meetings today so that I could come, but I still had to turn my phone off today just so that I could view this place in peace and quiet. I'm thinking of getting a new phone so that I can have a separate one for the business and one personal one. That way I can turn the work one off and not worry about missing calls from family. Oh, you sound very busy. And what is it that you do for work, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I don't mind. I run my own furniture business. We're mainly online, but we have a consultation office and hopefully we'll have a brick and mortar store in the future. It's still fairly new, though, so I am still the one handling a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It must be so much fun to have your own business. And furniture. Sounds fancy. Thanks. It is, I suppose. It's always fun doing something that you want to do with your time. All right, all right. No need to plug your business any more than that right now. Let's get this all finished up. Okay now, you girls have fun today. I'll be back in three hours to pick you up as we discussed. Give me a call though if it's going to be sooner or later than that. Thanks for dropping us off. But are you sure that you don't want to come with us while I try on the dresses? It could be fun. You know that I don't like shopping. I would just be in the way. I don't want to ruin the fun for you by being bored and moping around. But this isn't just shopping. This is for my wedding dress. It's something special. You can see how good I look in all of them instead of just the one on the day. Doesn't that sound good? To be honest, I would rather be surprised on the day when you walk down that aisle. And I know that you and your mom will choose something beautiful for you to wear. My opinion won't even be useful. All I would be doing is sitting on a chair and being amazed at how good you look in each and every one of them. I don't think I would be of any help to you in actually making a decision. You're better off without me there. <laughs> fine, fine, I get it. I will let you off the hook. What are you going to do then while you wait? Or will you just go home and come back? Well, since I am here, I thought I would take a look at some of the furniture stores and see what kind of things they are selling. A bit of research, let's call it. And then I will grab a bite to eat and maybe relax in a cafe for a while. I have a little bit of work that I can do on my phone which will help me get ahead. You know, send some emails and make some appointments, that sort of thing. It's always work with you. This is your day off, isn't it? Why not turn the phone off for a while and just spend some time relaxing and not thinking about work? It's not really work today. 
and it doesn't hurt to check out what the competition is like around here. If I am ever going to open a store, I should know what the others are doing. It would help for our future. And doing some of the other busy work now while I wait for you will make my other work days easier, so it's a win-win in my book. Don't worry about me. This is what I want to do. All right, then. Just don't work too hard. I will let you know if the time changes. But if you don't hear from me, then meet us back here in three hours. I will. Have fun today. Hi. Excuse me. Do you have a moment? Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you with something today? We usually require booking for anyone who wants to look at the dresses, though. Oh, it's not really about anything like that. Uh, you see, my fiancé and her mother were here today to try on wedding dresses, and I was supposed to pick them up right about now. They don't seem to be here anymore, and they're not answering their phones either. Do you know anything? Did they leave already? Ah, uh, you must mean Miss Jacobs and her mother, correct? That's right! Did they say that they would wait for me somewhere or anything? Actually, sir, they left over an hour ago. Miss Jacobs' mother got a phone call and it sounded rather urgent. They were very excited about something, so they canceled the rest of the dress previews and rescheduled for another day. Someone came to pick them up a little after that. I think it would have been her father. Really? They left? They didn't even send me a text. That's pretty unusual for them. Okay, thank you for your time and sorry for bothering you. Have a nice day. And you too, sir. Hey, Soph, what's going on? I went to the dress store and the lady at the counter told me that the two of you ran off somewhere. Where did you go? Did something happen? Why didn't you message me if you were going to be leaving? Why didn't you pick up your phone? Where have you been? Oh, John! I'm so sorry about that. Mom got a call from my sister and there was some really big news so we just had to rush home. Dad came to pick us up and I was so flustered with rescheduling the dress fittings and thinking about Ellen that I just completely forgot to tell you what happened. You remember my sister Ellen, don't you? You had me really worried. I thought that something might have happened when you didn't come out at the right time. At least everything is okay. That's fine. I had plenty to do, so it wasn't like I was just wasting my time. And of course I remember Ellen. But is everything okay? I mean, what was with the news? Is Ellen okay? Oh, everything is great! Guess what? You'll never believe what's happening with her. It's just such a coincidence. She's also getting married. Her boyfriend, I guess I should say fiancé now. Well, he proposed just a few days ago, and she finally let us know. That's why we ran off like that. We just had to go and see her to congratulate her about it. Oh, is that what happened? That is great news. Tell her that I said congratulations. Who would have thought that the timing would have worked out like that? The two of you getting married in such a short time frame? Your parents must be feeling through the roof right now. You just know that they are. And I am too. Ellen has always been my baby sister and it's so warming to see her find someone to marry. I was a little worried that she wouldn't settle down. She was often going from one boyfriend to the next when she was younger. I tried to tell her to stop dating like that, but she always just said that she was young and having fun. Well, I can see her point of view on that. And she is still pretty young even now, isn't she? I wouldn't say that she should have been in any rush, but it's good to hear that at least she has now found someone. It really is a relief. There probably wasn't anything to worry about, but I always feel like I have to look out for her. She is my baby sister. No matter how old she gets, she will always be that to me. Yeah, I know. Whenever anything happens with me, you go completely into mom mode and drop everything to help her out. I know, I'm sorry about that, but I just can't help it. It's something that I have always done and I can't change that now. No need to apologize. I like that about you. You're caring towards your family members and I know that you will make a great mom when we decide to have a family. <laughs> Thanks. I think so too. But we can talk more about that after we're married. But there is something else that I need to tell you about. I hope you won't be too mad about it. It's about the wedding. About whose wedding? Our wedding or Ellen's? What would I be mad about? Well, I guess you could say it's about both of our weddings. Okay. So what is it? What do you need to tell me? The thing is, 
Ellen is so super excited about getting married, and I'm so excited for her that she wants to be the one to get married first. We talked about it for a while, and I decided to let her have her wedding day before mine. I know I didn't discuss it with you, but I hope that this is okay. Really? So does that mean that ours is going to get pushed back instead then? Does it really matter who gets married first? I mean, we did get engaged before her and have already started planning everything. Do we need to change that? We have the hall booked and everything. And you were just looking at wedding dresses today. I know that it's a very sudden change of plans, but I think this is for the best. She has always kind of lived in my shadow since she is the youngest, and I thought that this would be a nice way for her to finally be able to be first for once, you know? I can kind of see what you mean, but are you really okay with that? Can you wait? And what about the hall? We paid a deposit on it already. I'm totally fine with her going first, and it could even give us a little extra time to plan ours, which is never a bad thing. So, about the hall, yes. I realize that we already paid a deposit, and I don't think that they're going to give that back to us. I'm positive that they won't. No, that is usually non-refundable. They would just take it as a cancellation fee instead if we told them that we didn't want it anymore. Right! So that's why I thought that we would just let Ellen use the hall in the day that we booked for it and have her wedding on that day instead. That way she can get it done nice and quickly and then we don't lose the money to cancellation fees. We're keeping the booking but changing the people. So she would have the wedding at the same place as us? Or did you want to find somewhere else for the two of us later? We can worry about that later on. Now her wedding is coming up kind of quickly, so we need to focus on helping her plan it all. Sure. So will she just give us the amount that we spent on the hall back? Is that how this is going to work? I don't think we will be able to swap out the card that we put down later on. Well, I thought that we could just let them keep the deposit and just pay the rest themselves. That way it's like a wedding gift from us to her. Neither she nor her fiancé make that much money with their jobs and they might find it hard to pay for a place that nice. But if they don't have to worry about the chunk that we already paid for, then they should be all good to go. Right. So that's our wedding gift to them? I mean, I guess it's a nice gesture. It is a little much though, isn't it? Is that the kind of money that people usually spend on wedding gifts? She's my sister! It can't be too much for her. And it's not like we're paying for the whole wedding anyway. Just what we already decided to pay for our own. She's young and this would mean a lot to her. It will be a big deal. I suppose you're right. Then should I call the venue again and make the changes? At least tell them that the day is the same, but the people are different. Don't you worry about that. I'm the one who made the changes, so I don't want to bother you with any of the annoying admin stuff. Besides, I was the one who put my number down on the form to talk about any changes that might happen. It would make more sense if I was the one who called them and let them know. I also know more about Ellen's details and all the rest of it. Okay. Then I guess I will leave it to you to sort everything out. But do it sooner rather than later. If you try to change things too late, you never know what they might say. I was going to do it as soon as I talked to you about it. I will give them a call soon. So where are you at the moment? I just got home a few minutes ago, but you're not here. Sorry about that, but I'm still at my parents' house. And I won't be home for some time yet. We all met up here and Ellen let us in on the news. We're going to have a family dinner to celebrate, if you don't mind. There should be something quick and easy to cook in the fridge. Just take a look. Or you could Uber eat something if you want. Okay, that's fine. I will have a look and sort myself out tonight. Are you going to get home on your own tonight, or do you need me to pick you up from somewhere? Yeah, I can get home on my own. I will get Dad to drop me off afterwards. I'll see you then. Okay, have fun. And don't forget to tell Ellen that I said congratulations. Hey, honey, there's been quite a large payment on one of my credit cards, and I just can't figure out what it might be. It was from two days ago. Do you know anything about it? I definitely didn't buy anything that cost so much, but I am having trouble figuring out what it might be. Oh, yeah, don't worry about that one. I know what that purchase was. What do you mean, don't worry about it? Of course I will worry. It's $3,000. That's not the kind of money that can just disappear without me worrying about it. What did you buy? You have to tell me that much, at least. Well, you know how Ellen and I went to look at wedding dresses together the other day? I decided that I would use our credit card to buy the dress for her. You know, as a wedding gift. We found her a really beautiful dress. So the money didn't just disappear. 
is all going to a good cause. But $3,000? That must really be some expensive dress. Is that how much they usually cost? And why didn't you talk to me about this first? I thought that us giving our venue reservation to her and paying the down payment was supposed to be our wedding gift to the two of them. Why are we paying for the dress as well? This wasn't something that we had discussed. I didn't ask you because I thought you would understand. This is my little sister that we're talking about here. I think it's fine for us to give her more than one gift for the wedding. I mean, she did need to have a spectacular dress to match the venue too, don't you think? It would have looked strange if the wedding is held in such an extravagant hall and the bride didn't have a dress to match that. I just couldn't let that happen to her. She should be able to look back on her wedding with fond memories, and all of the photos should be the best she has ever looked in her life. I get your point, but I don't think you should be making these kinds of purchases without asking me first. I mean, this is with my credit card after all. What if the bank had called me or something and I told them that I had no idea what the purchase was? They might have canceled it or thought it was a fraudulent charge or whatever else. I don't want to have my credit score ruined because of something that I didn't even know about. I think you're overreacting a bit here. Why would they call you in the first place? What's the point of having a credit card if you don't make purchases with it? They wouldn't think that was weird. It's not that they definitely would have called. I'm just saying it's not something that I should be left out of the loop on. You need to tell me these sorts of things. Fine, fine. In that case, I better tell you in advance that I also put your card down for her makeup and hair as well. What? I'm supposed to be paying for that as well. Just how many gifts do you think I should be paying for her? Isn't it usually just one per person? The hair, the makeup, and the dress is all just one gift. Those have to come in a package. She can't have a beautiful dress without the hair and makeup to match it. It would look weird. Can't she just pay for those things herself? At this point, I'm basically paying for her entire wedding. And we're the ones who are supposed to be getting married. Now all of my money is going to a wedding that isn't even ours. I told you that she and her fiancé don't have the money to come up with a wedding this quickly. And since I told her that she could be married first, we would have had to wait a long time if we didn't help them with this. Do you really want to wait a long time for us to get married as well? Don't you want to get married to me as soon as you can? Of course I do. That's why our wedding was supposed to be in a month from now. We wanted to get it done this year. But things changed a little, didn't they? We need to wait a bit and have it after Ellen's wedding. You already agreed to put it off until after theirs, so I don't understand why you're complaining about it now. It's just some money. You have enough of it, don't you? I'm not complaining. I just want to be told when my credit card is being used to buy things, that's all. Okay, listen, I get it. I know you want your sister to have a great day, so it's fine that I pay for her dress and all the rest of it too. I'm not really complaining about the cost or anything. It's just that you didn't tell me about it, so I was shocked to see this kind of charge on my card. Just let me know next time you want to buy something that big, okay? I knew you would understand. Thanks, John. This is why I love you. There you are, John. I was looking all over for you today. I just had to speak to you. I didn't manage to see you after all the guests started arriving. You just got lost in the crowd. Just look at all of these people who made it here today. This day is just wonderful. I couldn't ask for anything else. The venue is amazing and I can't wait to see what kind of food they are going to serve us as well. It must be just as incredible. There really are a lot of people here, aren't there? I didn't expect Ellen to invite so many people today. Luckily, this hall can easily fit them all in. And even with this many, it doesn't feel cramped at all. I know, and it's all thanks to you. You're just so generous. I knew that Sophie chose the right man when she told me that you two were getting engaged. I was worried that Ellen wouldn't even be able to afford to have a wedding at all. But then you really stepped up and paid for all of this for her. I'm so grateful, and Sophie is so lucky to have someone as generous as you in her life. Oh, well, it's not like I paid for absolutely everything. You don't need to praise me that much. <laughs> it's just a gift from us to Ellen. Oh, you're just being modest. You don't need to be. Sophie told me all about it already. And if you were willing to fork out this much money for a wedding that's not even your own, I can't wait to see what kind of wedding you will put together for you and Sophie. I couldn't be happier as a mom. Both of my daughters getting married to this kind of fanfare. And so close together, too. What could be better? By the way, 
have the two of you decided on the new date of your wedding yet? Not yet. We will have to wait and see what kind of place is available to us. But hopefully we will still be able to make it before the end of the year. But honestly, I am not being modest. I didn't pay for everything here today. Just some of it. Oh, rubbish. You don't need to act like that around me. You're going to be my son-in-law soon. We can speak candidly about these things. I really don't know what you mean by that. I'm not being modest at all. Oh, hold on a second. That's my niece Susie over there. I haven't seen her for such a long time. Ellen really did invite the whole family. I'll leave you to enjoy the night as well, and we can talk later on. I have to go and say hi. It's the best chance for me to brag about how lucky my girls and I are. Uh, sure thing. I'll talk to you later, Fiona. Ellen, I just wanted to say congratulations on the marriage and the wedding. We haven't had the chance to see each other in person since Sophie told me the news. And by the way, the dress and everything looked great. You really outdid yourself today. But that's to be expected on a day like this, I guess. Thanks so much, John. I couldn't be happier right now. And it's all thanks to you as well. I spoke to your mom briefly before, and she was super excited about all of this. She seemed to be the happiest person in the room. Oh, I don't think so. There's no way that anyone could be any happier than I am right now. I don't think that's even possible. This is a dream come true for me. I can't even fully describe what this day means to me. But of course I'm glad that she is enjoying herself. Yeah. She also said she's very excited about the food that's going to be served later. <laughs> oh, of course she is. That's always the most important part when it comes to her. But I don't blame her for looking forward to that either. I think what the caterers have made for us today will be just divine. I'm looking forward to it myself. Sophie always said that you were doing well, but I didn't think you would go so far just for little old me. I was able to invite so many people here today to celebrate with me as well. It's been like a fairy tale all day long. You know, I know that I was being a little selfish when I asked Sophie if I could get married instead of her, and I wasn't sure that either of you would be okay with it since you got engaged first. I'm really grateful that you were okay with that. I didn't get the chance to properly thank you for it. She said that she wanted you to kind of be the first for a change, since she is older than you, and she was always the one doing everything first your whole lives. I can understand that, and postponing the wedding isn't that big of a deal. We didn't have that much booked except for the hall. And even then, we didn't really lose the down payment since we were able to let you use this place instead of us. Yeah, Sophie has always been number one in our family, and I really wanted just this one thing. I know it was a little much to ask, so thank you. But then for you to give us all of this as a wedding gift as well. That really is so kind of you. It's okay. You don't need to be like that. Your mom was going on about it before as well. It makes me feel a little embarrassed, to be honest. Oh, nonsense! How can I not thank you for everything you have done? When Sophie told me just how much only the down payment was for this place, I thought that I would faint. The price was insane. There would be no way that me and Kevin could ever afford to pay even the down payment let alone the entire cost to rent this place for the night. We were starting to lose hope of having a big wedding and thought of only inviting a few close family members and doing it somewhere small. But this, this is what I have always dreamed my wedding would look like even when I was a little girl. There's nothing missing. Everything is perfect. Wait, hold on a second. What do you mean you wouldn't be able to afford even the down payment? I know that it was a lot, but still... Then how did you end up paying for tonight? The down payment was only a quarter of the total price. And that's why I thought that I would faint when she told me how much it was. But what are you talking about? We didn't pay for it. There's no way that we would have been able to. You're the one who came through for us when we needed it the most. Don't tell me that you forgot about that. I simply don't believe that's something that can happen. What? I was only going to pay the down payment for the venue. Oh, and the dress and the hair and all of that as well. What are you talking about? Oh, well, I heard that that was the plan at first. But then you offered to pay for the entire cost in the end so that we didn't have to worry about it. We might have had to go into a lot of debt to afford it. And we didn't want to start off our new life together with a bunch of debt to pay off. That really would have made it difficult to enjoy myself today if I only had money problems in the back of my mind the whole time. But now, I don't have to worry about a single thing and I'm able to enjoy myself completely. 
I can't wait for the photos either. We need to get a view together as well. It wouldn't be right if we didn't. Um, sure. I'm not really sure what's going on, but that doesn't matter right now. You should just enjoy the rest of the night. You're right! We have been here talking about money problems and the chance that Kevin and I would have gotten into debt to pay for a wedding. That's not the kind of thing that we should be talking about tonight. Oh, look! There's a photographer over there! Let's go get him to take a few snaps while he's not too busy. John, you were so quiet in the car on the way home tonight. Is everything okay? Are you just tired from the whole thing today? I know that you get kind of drained in huge social situations. And there sure are a lot of people there tonight. But you did know a lot of people there, so it shouldn't have been too bad, right? I guess there were probably some family members of mine that you didn't know so well, though. It's got nothing to do with that at all. The wedding itself was great. It all went off without a hitch and everyone seemed to really enjoy themselves. Ellen had a blast and your mom was happy. All great. Just fine. Exactly. So then what's wrong? You said yourself that it was a great night. You're acting weird. I spent some time talking to your mom and to Ellen tonight, Sophie. And so what? Of course you did. Why wouldn't you have spoken to them? There's something that they both said that really got under my skin a little bit. I didn't know what to think about it. When your mom first said it, I brushed it off because I thought that she had just misunderstood something. But then Ellen said the same thing and I realized that there was no misunderstanding at all. What on earth are you even talking about right now? Just get it out already? What did they say to you? They kept thanking me for paying for everything tonight. I tried to tell them that I didn't pay for everything, but they just said I was being modest. But I wasn't being modest. The only thing I was supposed to be paying for was the down payment on the venue so that we didn't lose the deposit. And then you went ahead and paid for Ellen's dress, makeup, and hair without telling me. Fine, I agreed to that as well. And now I find out at the wedding that I'm paying for the whole venue as well? I still didn't believe it. There's no way that things were like that, I kept telling myself. But I checked my account and the money is gone. What the hell, Sophie? Since when was that part of the plan? What's going on? Why did you lie to me? Oh, is that all it is? Don't be so dramatic. I thought this was going to be something else. I thought that they said something mean to you or hurt your feelings somehow. I couldn't imagine either of them doing that, so I was getting worried. Okay, look. Yeah. First you were only going to pay the down payment for the venue. But you should have seen Ellen's face when I told her how much she would have had to pay on top of that. She looked like she had seen a ghost. There's no way that she would have been able to afford it on her own. So I said that we would cover the whole thing for her. She was so happy when I said that. You should have seen her face when she heard me. What do you mean, we? At the moment, there is no we. It's just been me who has been paying for everything. But we're getting married, so it's basically the same as both of us paying. Once we're married, all of the finances are together, right? What's the big deal? We're not married yet. We're not married because you let Ellen get married first. And fine, whatever, I was okay with that. Then you go behind my back and pay for more of it when you went dress shopping with her. And again, I thought, whatever, I will let it slide. But I told you to ask me first. I told you that you need to check with me before doing things like that and buying things with my money and you said you would. And then I find out that you went behind my back again and paid even more money without me knowing about it. How could you do this to me, Sophie? I was so clear about not doing this again. Don't even try and tell me that you thought this was different. This was different. This was completely different. You already said yes to the down payment, so I thought it would be okay. Why are you making such a big deal about this? I mean, if we didn't pay for the rest of it, then they wouldn't have been able to cover it and we would have lost the deposit anyway. And that would have been a complete waste of money all for nothing. It's better to pay a little more and then get something out of it, isn't it? There you go again with the we. It's not we. It's just me who is paying. You could have paid with your money if you thought it wasn't such a big deal. And without knowing anything about it either. Why couldn't you just have told me about it before you went ahead with this? You know that I wouldn't have been able to pay for that on my own. Don't even bring up stupid ideas like that when they could never have happened. And I didn't think it would matter anyway. It's not like I was trying to hide it. I would have told you eventually. It's not like I wouldn't notice that much money disappearing from my account. 
You wouldn't have been able to hide it even if you wanted to. But I told you that if we didn't help, then they would have had to wait a long time to get the money together for the wedding on their own. Is that what you wanted? Because that would have delayed ours even more. It's better this way so that we can get our wedding planned as well. At this rate, we won't have enough money for our own wedding. And it seems as though your mom is expecting something even bigger and grander than today. I might not be struggling with money, but that doesn't mean that I'm just so flush with cash that I can be throwing it out left and right. I was only supposed to pay for some things, and then I find out today that I paid for pretty much the entire event. How do you think this makes me feel? Next, you're going to tell me that I paid for the caterers as well. Oh, would that make you even more upset? Would that make me even more upset? Of course it would. I don't believe this. You have got to be kidding me. You paid for that too. Is there anything that I didn't pay for at this damn wedding then? I guess they paid for the flowers and my mom and dad paid for the photographers, I think. Oh, great. That makes me feel so much better. And I guess they didn't know that they were paying for those. Of course they did. How else would they have hired them? Don't be stupid. Then what about me? Why was I in the dark about my role here? Everyone else seemed to be told about everything except for me. You went ahead and took so much of my hard-earned money and used it on your sister's wedding without even mentioning it to me. She's my sister, John! She deserves a beautiful wedding! You know how much I care about her. I was just trying to look after my family. Why can't you see that? This doesn't have to turn into such a big thing. And it's just money. Who cares about that? Ellen gets a day to remember for the rest of her life. You can't put a price on that. This was worth it. You can always make more money, but this was the one day she had. It won't come around again. The way I see it, this was the only thing to do. There was no other option. It's not about the money, Sophie. It's not about the damn money. If it was about the money, then I would have said no to the dress and the makeup. It's about the fact that you went behind my back and didn't tell me what you were doing. I told you to tell me first. All you had to do was come and ask me, and then I would have understood. That was the other option that you had. The only correct one at that. Sure, I might have been a little bit reluctant at first, but you probably could have won me over. I know that you care about her, but what about me? Do you not care about me enough to even come and talk to me? Of course I do. I love you. Don't say things like that. It's not funny to joke about this. Do you see me laughing? I'll say it again. This isn't about the money, Sophie. This is about trust. How am I supposed to trust you anymore after you did this? We're supposed to be getting married soon. We're supposed to be a team and do everything together. How can I trust you to make decisions for our future when you have gone and done this? I just wanted Ellen to have a perfect day. She's your sister-in-law now, and I thought you'd understand. Understand? You didn't trust me enough to discuss it? You went behind my back and used our money for Ellen's dress, makeup, and hair. And now I find out you paid for the whole venue? So, you basically sacrificed our wedding for Ellen's. What happened to our plans, Sophie? I didn't mean for it to happen this way. I just wanted everyone to be happy. I didn't think you would get so upset. I thought it would be the same as when I told you about the dress. You wanted everyone to be happy. Everyone except me, right? You didn't think about me at all. You never considered how this would affect our relationship, did you? Why are you being like this right now? I get you're upset, but why bring our relationship into this? I was trying to do something good for the family. That's all it was. And they're your family now, too. You know that, right? You shouldn't get angry about doing things for them. This is what you're supposed to do for family. What about us? We're about to get married, and you're making major decisions without me. How can I trust you when you make decisions like this without even telling me? It's not that big of a deal. I paid for some stuff and that was it. Maybe it was more than you were expecting, but you knew for the most part. It is a big deal to me, Sophie. We need trust and to be able to communicate. We're supposed to be partners, not just in love, but in everything. Okay, maybe I should have told you. Is that what you wanted to hear? I just got caught up in the moment and I wanted everything to be perfect. That's all there is to it. And it was perfect. Did you see how much fun everyone was having? Did you see my mom and Ellen? 
It was a perfect wedding. Everything went how it was supposed to go. Perfect at the cost of our trust. Was that really worth it? I thought we were going to be building a life together. Trust is fragile, and you just shattered it. I can't go into a marriage not knowing if you'll make decisions like this again. What are you saying right now? You can't be serious. Don't joke about things like this. I'm not joking about anything. I would never joke about something like this. But I was trying to do something good. Why can't you see that? I already said that I should have told you. What more do you want from me? You're taking this too far. Just go to sleep and you won't be angry when you wake up. Good intentions don't justify breaking our trust. We're supposed to be a team, working together, making decisions together. You went behind my back, used my money for Ellen's expenses, and didn't even tell me the truth until now. I had to find it out from somebody else. I was barely able to keep it in the entire time, but I didn't want to ruin things for Ellen. But I don't think I can do this. I forgave you for it once, but this is just too much. I can see it happening again in the future, and I don't want to have to live my life not even being able to trust the one person I am supposed to trust the most in this whole world. Are you kidding me? You're acting as though I cheated on you or something. All I did was give my sister a day that she would never forget. This is insane. This shouldn't be something that ruins our relationship. It's just money. Since when do you think that money is the most important thing in the world? I told you that it's not about the money. And you're not the one who gets to decide how this affects me. I'm going to stay somewhere else tonight. There's a lot that I need to think about after today. Then go! Go wherever you want to. I know that you'll be back. You just want to say that to scare me so that I grovel and apologize to you. But it won't work. I know that I didn't do anything wrong. I did the right thing at the time for my sister and anyone else would have done the same. Come back when you have gotten over your little tantrum and we can go back to normal. We have our own wedding to plan and I don't want to waste time on this anymore. Sleep it off somewhere and get it out of your head already. John, Sophie tells me that you haven't been replying to any of her calls or messages. She is really distraught about all of this. I'm begging you to call her back and talk this out with her. You can work this out. I know she made a mistake, but you should forgive her. I'm sorry, Fiona, but there's nothing else for the two of us to talk about. We have said everything that needs to be said, and I have made my final decision. There's no going back on it now. Are you really going to throw away this relationship just because of this one thing? I can understand why you're upset, but aren't you overreacting? You were so happy together. It looked like nothing would ever get between the two of you. I just never thought things would end between the two of you in this way. Believe me, neither did I. But this is the way it has to be. I can't spend the rest of my life with someone who I can't even trust. This was a line for me and she crossed it without even thinking twice. I can't put up with that. And there's nothing that will change your mind. You're really set on this. Can't you just talk to her one more time? In person. If the two of you meet up again, I'm sure that things will be different. They have to be. I think this is a mistake for you to walk out on her. I'm afraid not. I have made my mind up already and nothing will change it now. John, I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I feel horrible. I didn't know that this was happening the way it was. The wedding wasn't supposed to be something that came between you and Sophie. Please forgive her for this. She was just trying to do something nice for me. That's all it was. I didn't ever think that my wedding would be what led you two to split. It's not your fault, Helen. You didn't do anything. You didn't know, and there was no reason for you to think that Sophie was doing that on her own without me knowing about it. And it wasn't the wedding itself. The day was great, and I am glad you had your moment. But she's so upset. I have never seen her like this. You have to talk to her and make up. You can't just end things over this. Please. Your mom messaged me yesterday and told me the same thing, but I have the same answer for you two. She broke the trust that we had, and that's that. It's an easy thing to break, but not an easy thing to put back together. And even if you manage to build it back up, there will always be cracks in there no matter what. I can't rely on her anymore. I can't trust her. I just simply can't. What if we had kids? What if she made these kinds of terrible decisions after we started a family? 
I just can't bring myself to do it or to take that risk. I can't look at her anymore without thinking about how she went behind my back. And it's not just that, either. She didn't even realize what she did was wrong. You say that she is upset, but she didn't seem upset or sorry at all. She didn't try to understand where I was coming from. She got defensive and just made it seem like I was throwing a tantrum for the sake of it. What if we give you all the money back? It might take some time for me and Kevin to get it together, but we can pay it back to you in installments. I mean, would that fix things? That way you didn't even lose anything. Then you could forgive her and get back together, right? That's not the point, Ellen. It's not about the money and it never has been. And I will be getting the money back from Sophie anyway. There's no need for you and Kevin to get involved when it wasn't really your fault. But I will be getting it back for what she took without asking me. The deposit, the dress, and all the rest of it is still my wedding gift to you. I agreed to pay for that and I won't go back on my word even though this has happened now. Don't feel bad about anything. You had nothing to do with it, and you shouldn't feel as though you did. Congratulations on the wedding again, Ellen. John, I have had enough of this. Stop sulking and come home already. You need to get over it. It's been long enough for you to get over it already, so get back here and we can get back to normal. Everyone thinks that we're going to break up or something. I don't know what you have been telling my mom and sister, but that's what they seem to think. Where are you anyway? You have been gone for a while. I thought you would have come back after a day or two, but you still haven't been home. This isn't just going away, Sophie. We are done. This is the end of us. I told you that, and I don't know why you don't see that I am being serious. And it doesn't matter where I am, but I want you to move your stuff out of my house within the week. I won't be coming back before that. Message me when you're gone. I don't really want to see you anymore. You can't be serious. You're not really going to end things like this, are you? Over something like this? What do you want me to do? I told you that I thought I was doing the right thing. I don't want you to do anything anymore. I said this so many times already, but it's a matter of trust and I don't trust you anymore. The only thing that you can do now is pack your things up and move out of my house. It shouldn't take you too long. All of the big stuff is mine. I'll give you a week, though, so that you don't have to rush too much. But I'm not giving you any more than that. This is ridiculous! One small thing and you're ready to throw away this whole relationship! We're engaged! We are going to get married! We're supposed to work through problems, not throw in the towel immediately and run for the hills. The problem is that you don't even think that this is a problem. You still think that you're in the right. You didn't even apologize and told me to leave when I said that I wanted to stay somewhere else for the night. You clearly don't even see that what you did was wrong. No matter how many times I said how big of a deal this was for me and the trust between us, you just got defensive and couldn't even say sorry. Is that all this is about then? You want an apology from me? Fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I paid for my sister's wedding and gave her such a memorable night. I'm sorry that I made everyone happy. Is that what you wanted? Is that it? Are you happy now? This is exactly what I mean. You're not even trying to understand what I am saying or why I am upset at what you did. That's not what happened and you know it. I'm not upset about the wedding or you making people happy. Don't try and make me sound psychotic. I bet that's what you've been telling everyone that I am upset about, but they still seem to see things reasonably. I'm sick of this, Sophie. I don't want to keep repeating myself over and over again. It wasn't about an apology, and that wasn't even a proper apology in the first place. It's too late for that anyway. There's nothing that you can do to change my mind about this anymore. Maybe you did have a chance, but you just left it and couldn't even admit that you were wrong. You didn't even try to understand. Fine then! I don't need you if you're going to act like a baby about this. I'm still young and can find someone else. You're the one who is getting older. But you better not expect any of the money back from me. Ellen told me that she offered to pay you back, but you said you were going to get it from me, but you're not. That was a gift from us to my sister. You can't take back gifts after the fact. And I don't care what you say to me. The gift was the dress, the makeup, the hair, and the deposit on the venue. That's all that I agreed to, and I won't be asking for that back. I already told Ellen that that was a gift from me and that I'm not going back on it. She doesn't need to worry about anything. But I will get the rest of it from you, and you better keep her out of it. 
You're the one who decided to use my money to pay for things without asking, so you're the one who needs to pay it back. And what if I refuse? I don't think you should get anything back. It's done, and if you want to break up over the whole thing, fine. But move along then and forget about your money. You're the one who said that it wasn't about the money. If that was true, then why are you hounding me about it now? It's not really about the money. It's about the principle, and I will be getting it back. You need to see that you did the wrong thing, and this is the only thing I can do to maybe show you that. Now you can do this the easy way or the hard way. It's your choice at the end of the day. The easy way is you just pay it back to me, transfer it to my account, and we're done. That's all that will happen, and we can both move on with our lives. And the hard way? What would that be? The hard way is that I get the courts involved and sue you for credit card fraud. You use my cards without my permission and without me knowing about it. I know that this will take longer and be more effort, but I am willing to go through with legal action if I have to. I would rather settle it just between us, but like I said, the choice is yours. What happens next is totally within your control. Oh, good luck with that. Who was going to say that me using my fiancé's credit card is fraud? You gave me that card to use. I didn't steal it. I gave you that card to put it down when we paid for the wedding venue. I didn't just give it to you to use for whatever you wanted without asking. You didn't give it back, and I didn't think much of it at the time, but that was my mistake, as I can now see. I should never have trusted you with it in the first place. I'm not giving you a single cent back. Deal with it. You can try and threaten me with legal action all you want, but you don't scare me. I know that you won't get the judge on your side at all. You can think that all you want, but I know that I will. You're just going to end up wasting more money on stupid court fees and waste both of our time. If you're the one who is so ready to throw away our relationship and move on, then move on! Stop thinking about what happened before and get on with your life without trying to ruin mine! Is this some kind of revenge that you want on me or something? Is it? You want to make things difficult for me? That's not what it is at all. It's not about revenge or getting back at you. It's about getting back what is rightfully mine. And to me... It won't be a waste of time or of money. Especially since I know that I am going to win this easily. You have a week to get out of my house with all of your things, and a week to pay me back the money. You can pay it back gradually, though, as well. A week for the first payment, and then I won't take you to court. I'm being very reasonable right now. But if you don't take this offer, then you will be hearing from my lawyer. Goodbye, Sophie. I hope I don't have to see you in court. I didn't get any messages from Sophie or her family after that, and I hope that meant that everything was over and that I didn't have to think about it anymore. But after a week had passed, I tried to go back to my house, but Sophie was still living there. She hadn't even started to move and seemed to have no intention of leaving either. I don't think that she had any idea of us getting back together or anything. She was just simply trying to make things harder for me than they had to be. I found it quite ironic that she accused me of trying to make things more difficult for her when she chose the most difficult possible options at every stage. I had to get the police involved in the end to get her out of my property, and then I promptly changed the lock so that she couldn't get back in. I got her key back from her, but I wasn't sure if she might have had a spare one somewhere or not. As someone might expect, since she didn't even move out when she was supposed to, she also didn't transfer me any of the money that she had taken from me. At first she kept arguing with me and tried to tell me to get the money from Ellen and not her, since it was used for Ellen's wedding, but I was firm that it was Sophie that needed to be the one to pay up. This went on for some time, and I finally realized that no matter how much I pushed her, she wouldn't give me anything, or would just keep trying to force me to get the money from her sister instead. So in the end, I got in touch with a lawyer and took her to court over it. Of course, the judge ruled in my favor, and she had to pay me the total sum in one lump payment. It took time for us to even get to court as I knew that it would, but I still think it was worth it in the end. She could have taken my deal and paid it over time to make things easier for herself, but she just had to take the hard way and do it like this. It turns out that Sophie didn't have enough savings to pay it all back in one payment, so she was forced to take out a personal loan in order to pay it on time. Last I heard, she had to live with her parents so that she could save on rent and make her loan repayments on time. Fiona and Steve were quite disappointed in how I acted and kept trying to get in touch with me to see if I would change my mind. It seems like they were told something else by Sophie about how I was trying to ruin her life by suing her on some stupid charges but I explained to them that I gave her the opportunity to settle this without taking any legal action, and she refused to do so. After they heard this, they lost some trust in their daughter since she lied to them, and they want her out of their house as soon as possible. It's a shame, of course, that things had to end on this kind of note for us, 
but I am thankful that this happened before we got married. With how difficult she was being throughout the entire process, I just can't imagine how much worse it would have been if there was some divorce proceedings thrown in there as well. I also feel bad that Ellen feels as responsible as she does, even though this wasn't really her fault. If Sophie felt even the slightest shred of responsibility that Ellen does, then maybe it wouldn't have come to this in the first place. But there is not much point thinking about what could have been. At the moment, I am just focusing on my business and not much else to keep my mind off of things. I do still have feelings for her, and they will take some time to go away. But I know in my heart that I made the right decision for myself. It will be a bit of a tough road ahead of me, but I am confident that I will get through it just fine. All I need is a bit of time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more content.